At tight end, 6'2", 275 pounds, senior from Suffolk, Virginia, number 84, <laughs> Willie Gillis III. At tight end. 6'2", 275 pounds, senior from Suffolk, Virginia, number 84, Willie Gillis, the third. <coughs> and at Z-back, 6'170 pounds, senior from Port Arthur, Texas, number two, Ricky Fish. At quarterback, 6'1", 235 pound graduate student from Queens, New York. Number five, Chris Andrews. <laughs> At fullback, 5'8", 220 pound senior from Tampa, Florida. Number 27, Marco Banks. And at running back, 5'7", 165 pound senior from Memphis, Tennessee, number one, <laughs> Orlando Johnson. Now starting on the Morgan State defense. At left end, 6'2", 250 pound junior from Lanham, Maryland, number nine, A.J. Agbalis. At nose tackle, 6'2", 340 pound sophomore from Farsville, Maryland, number 99, Antonio McCray. At right end, 6'3", 285 pound junior from Clinton, Maryland, number 55, Jai Franklin. <laughs> At 
at outside linebacker. 6'2", 230 pound sophomore from Waldorf, Maryland. Number 47, Malachi Washington. At inside linebacker, 6'1", 225 pound junior from Washington, D.C. Number seven, Damari Whitaker. At inside linebacker, 6'2", 225 pound senior from Houston, Texas. Number 41, Greg Gibson. At outside linebacker, six foot, two hundred pound sophomore from Detroit, Michigan, number twenty one, Jordan Cross. At quarterback, five ten, one hundred seventy pound senior from Memphis, Tennessee, number four, Dietrich Jones. At strong safety, 6'1", 190-pound sophomore from Columbus, New Jersey, number 26, Paul Gorn. Man, that's your credit, man. And free safety. Yeah, he to dip below six, six, six man. Right now, he's talking about four hundred. There he is, Johnson. Four hundred is a good look. I say five hundred. He'll be there with his son. Come back. Six hundred. 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 Morgan State University is coached by Fred C. Carrier in his first season as interim head coach of the Bears. Coach Carrier is a graduate of Holy Cross University and is in his third game as the Bears head coach. The Bears bring a 1 2 record into today's game after defeating Howard University last weekend, 28 to 23. Okay, guys. Today's opponent, the Hornets of Delaware State University, head coach of Kenny Collins, the of season as head coach of the Hornets. Delaware State has an 0 3 record overall. Today's game will be the Hornets' B at opening. Good afternoon, Morgan State football fans. The Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference and Morgan State University are committed to the ideals of good sportsmanship and fair play. We ask all persons to please show respect for the opposing team, game officials, and each other. Profanity, racial or sexual comments, or other intimidating actions directed at the officials, student athletes, coaches, or team reps will not be tolerated. Any spectator who interferes with the game by coming onto the field or throwing objects onto the field at any time is subject to be ejected from the state.
Check one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. You brought your phones to the game. Pull them out. The game will be live on the Morgan State Facebook page on Facebook Live. So tune in to the game live on video. Testing one two one two. 
Testing. Testing, testing. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two. Testing one, two, three. Right, testing, testing it. one, two. Appreciate it. One more time. Testing, 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 testing one, two, testing, testing, testing. Now I need to know. First of all, can you hear yourself? Let's do another test. Yeah. You got yourself? Mm -hmm. Now tell me if you can hear me. Mic check, one, two, one, two, one, two, check mic, check mic, okay, good enough. Check one, check two, check three. All right, let me show you this headset. They have an off-on switch. Uh, if, you, if you're not using them, just, just turn it off, just save the battery. Same thing with the mic, you just turn it off. Oregon State University Magnificent Marching Machine will take to the field to perform the Morgan State fight song, the Morgan Grizzly, and I'm so glad. be in the building.
Yeah, yeah, I had a tiger. All right, appreciate it, man. Thank you, Rodney. Morgan. Will you please rise for the posting of the colors by the Morgan State University ROTC Battalion. Remain standing for the playing of our national anthem. State University football begins in five. Believe in the process, believe in the program. Four, Today has got to be a great day. Three. And you can choose to make it that way. Two. Create the energy, kids, and make the day great. One. You shape your own future. Morgan State Florida. University football begins in five. to Orlando Johnson. Trying to swing at the five yard line. The two, the one, the doorstep, the house. Orlando Johnson, another trip to pay dirt. Bing are back on the board. LB3 gets the call again. Breaks the tackle to the 10, the 5, LB3 to the house. Bears on the board. Lamont round the third on the 22 yard scamper. of the MEAC heat looking to stay there on a week-by-week -week basis. The Bears took that first step last Saturday against the Bison of Howard University. Coach, maybe some things about the game that didn't proceed the way you would have liked, but I know you had to love the result. Give me your assessment of your team's performance last weekend against the Howard Bison. You know, I think last week was a, was a really good weekend. You know, there's some, some things that obviously we can do better. You'd like to have a chance to just stay consistent and, and win that game in a going away fashion but for our kids to take a lead you know not play so well throughout the course of the middle of the game and then to fall behind but then to have enough uh, courage and determination to keep fighting back get back in the game go down with four minutes left uh, 13 play drive you know late in the game where we kind of grinded it out we didn't uh, panic our kids didn't panic the quarterback Chris Andrews pulled the ball down a couple times with some very key quarterback scrambles where he got uh, some key yardage on the third down run and then got a first down on the fourth down play uh, and then got another scramble on the fourth down play, the third or fourth down play where he did some really good things late in the game just to keep us.
us in it after having made some mistakes throughout the course of the game with two critical interceptions. But, you know, I like the way our guys fought back. I like the way they didn't panic. I like the way they just kept their head in the game and we just kept doing what we needed to do and then found a way to score late to take back the lead. And then defensively, we did enough to get off the field on the last play of the game. You know, you give up a couple plays kind of when you're in that prevent defense trying to make sure teams can't throw the ball over your head. And, you know, one of the things we did, we got to find a way to eliminate the dumb penalties or the unnecessary penalties. You know, during those times, we get a late hit on the third down where we got them stopped. Uh, short of the first down and it's, it's a time where they're probably going to punt and we get a rough in the passer type penalty that's just unnecessary and those types of penalties we have to eliminate but I was happy to see us stay in there I was happy to see us kind of grind it out and find a way to get a win and you know early in the season when you haven't had a lot of success sometimes teams won't respond in a way where they, they stay in there and they stay locked in enough to go down late in the game and score and win a game for you but this team did that so I thought that showed a lot of character and that's definitely something for us to build off of. We got a lot of things we got to clean up, and we're going to get those identified and clean them up. But I think just to, the determination to stay in the game, hang in there, and keep fighting and play a game for 60, tr truly for 60 minutes, I thought was a good sign for our football team at the beginning of the season. Comment, if you will, Coach, on the uh, atmosphere. Night game, first uh, night game on the yard in quite some time. Hype atmosphere, good crowd in the house, and maybe even help uh, the Bears bounce back to that win. Give me a sense of the kind of environment that we had on the Morgan campus last weekend. You know, I think the I think the environment on campus was just electric. There was a lot of things going on on campus. There were a couple other events, and just having a lot of people on campus excited about the football game. You know, it was a seven o'clock kickoff, but there were people walking around campus, uh, going into the bookstore at 11, 12 o'clock in the afternoon. It was just naturally just more people on campus, and it was just a, a a feel of energy all around campus. And then, you know, the crowd was fantastic. The majority of our home side was filled. Uh, some people came on the Howard side a little bit once the game got started but uh, I felt the I felt the environment and the atmosphere was electric and uh, right at the end of the game when we finally won the game I mean you can feel the roar of the crowd get excited when we knocked that last ball down and, and having those guys there with us the entire time cheering and, and, and trying to get their team to play well and those types of things I think it absolutely makes a difference you know the games are played for the enjoyment of the fans for the enjoyment of the alumni and administration and the student body and we absolutely need you there we absolutely enjoy having you there and and our team is going to feed off of that that excitement is a big deal and uh, that environment was very much like a homecoming homecoming crowd feel and uh, we, we got to find a way to, to to duplicate that type of feeling and that type of atmosphere every Saturday when we play at home you're listening to the Fred T. Ferriero Report. It is our weekly look at Morgan State University football. We do it through the eyes of the first-year head coach at Morgan State, Fred T. Ferriero. Bears 1-0 in conference play, and they're looking to make it two in a row. On deck this afternoon, here come the Hornets of Delaware State. They're having a tough time so far in the 2016, uh, looking for a victory. This will be the Hornets' first MEAC game this afternoon against Morgan. They're coming off a tough road game in Missouri. I uh, played Missouri uh, at Missouri, and the result was a difficult one for Delaware State. 79 to Donut uh, was the final count. So you have a team coming in to uh, U Stadium today, Coach, that's uh, still in search of a victory. But much like uh, we were last Last week, they're coming off their last non-conference game. And
My name is Thomas Martin. I'm 5'10", 185. I'm a senior. I'm from Naples, Florida. I went to Naples High School and I'm a business administration major. At wide receiver. My name is Ricky Fish. I'm six feet uh, even. I weigh 185 pounds. I'm a senior. I'm from Port Arthur, Texas. I went to Port Arthur Memorial High School. My major is sociology. At running back. My name is Orlando Johnson, 5'5", 160, senior, Memphis, Tennessee, Greenway High School, business administration. At quarterback, Chris Andrews, 6'1", 230, grad, Queens, New York, St. Joseph Regional High School. Now let's meet the starters on defense for MSU. At defensive end, well, my name is Iodeji Agbelis. I am 6'3", I weigh 250 pounds, I'm a junior, and I'm from PG County, Maryland, and I went to Duval High School, and I'm an electrical engineering major. At defensive end, my name is Sarad Roberts, I'm 6'4", 250, in class, I'm a junior, hometown Baltimore, Maryland, high school, Willow High, the major is sports administration. At nose guard, my name is John Franklin, my height, I'm 6'4", my weight, I'm 275, my class, I'm a red. Here, Junior, my hometown from Clear, Maryland. Uh, the high school I went to was Wise High School. My major is sociology. I'm gonna get my master's in that. Then I'm gonna go back to school and get a degree in criminal justice and computer science. At outside linebacker. My name is Brandon Griffin. I'm 5'11", 220 pounds. I'm a redshirt sophomore. I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. And I went to Centennial High School in Franklin, Tennessee. My major is business administration. At inside linebacker. My name is Damari Whitaker, 6'1", 225, junior, from Washington, D.C., freshman collegiate high school, electrical engineer major. At inside linebacker. My name is Greg Gibson, height 6 foot, weight 225 pounds. I'm a senior from Houston, Texas, Lamar High School, family consumer science major. At cornerback. Hi, my name is Desha Jones, my height 5'10", weight 175, class. I'm a senior, hometown, Memphis, Tennessee High School, Southwind High School major. At cornerback. My name is Delonte Hall, 5'8", 180 pounds, senior for Washington, Maryland, Friendly High School, physical therapy major. At free safety. My name is DJ Johnson. I'm 6'1", I'm 185. I'm a sophomore. I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. I went to St. Paul School for boys, and I'm a uh, physical therapy major. At strong safety. My name is Carl Garns, height 6 foot. I weigh 185. Plus, I'll be a sophomore, registered freshman on the field, hometown, Burlington, New Jersey, high school, Camden Catholic, and major secondary education. And kicker. My and name is Alex Rea. I'm 5'11", 175, class of uh, 2019, hometown, Beaumont, California, high school, Beaumont High School, and my major is finance. 
It's showtime. Time to join the fellows in the booth. Lamont Germany and yours truly, Renard Stubbs. Showtime indeed. Morgan State University campus. The orange and the blue of Morgan State taking on the Hornets of Delaware State. Kickoff in the air to begin the ball game. Bears returning the first kickoff of the contest. Morgan gets it back across the 20-yard line. The orange and the blue of Morgan State will go to work. First and 10, MSU. The Bears got it going on from their own 24-yard line. Welcome aboard, everybody. Just underway from Earl C. Banks Field, U Stadium on the Morgan State University campus. Your Bears against the Hornets of Delaware State. First play from scrimmage, quarterback Chris Andrews will give to the tailback. Looks to go straight ahead, bounces it outside across the 20, 25-yard line out of bounds at about the 34-yard line. That's going to be about a 9, maybe 10-yard pickup on first down. Close to a Morgan State first and 10. Indeed, they're going to move the sticks. O.J. has a first down for the orange and the blue. Yeah, it looked like a little inside zone play. Got a little crowded and bounced it outside. Great vision that time by the running back. Second play from scrimmage off the left side. This time, not much. Orlando Johnson got back to the line of scrimmage no further. Dallas State defense comes up to make the stick. Elijah Williams, the defensive lineman, freshman from Massachusetts on the stop. It'll be second down and nine for Morgan. Bears do it far side, Hesh. Orange and blue gonna do it from their own 35 yard line. Back to pass, Chris Andrews. Left hander will fire near sideline. Thomas Martin across the 45, written out of bounds at about the 47. That's an 11 yard pickup. That's a Morgan first and 10. Andrews fast time, Chris. Number 16. Andrews Thomas doing a nice Martin. job. Throwing the ball down the sideline. Curtis Martin coming up with his first Game catch of the game. Curtis the Martin, one of the leading Boy, receivers in the Mid-East Athletic Conference. Morgan State. has no give is to Orlando Johnson running on the cross to 45. OJ cuts it outside 40. Finally written out of bounds at about the 42-yard line. 14 yards Rush for the giddy up for Orlando Johnson. That's a first and 10 for MSU. The but. senior Orlando Johnson. Able to get a positive game for the Bears that time, guys. Only needing 141 yards coming in to gain 1,000 yards in his Morgan State career. Bears go to work. Far side hash mark of first and 10 in Delaware State territory from the 37-yard line. Again, short drop. Andrews the throw. Fires. Has Ricky Fisk. Fisk out of bounds inside the 30 at about the 28-yard line. Close to the lead stick. Maybe just a step shy of the first down. A different pace for the Morgan State Bear offense. Definitely a fast break offense today. Coming out real quick this time. Only taking about eight to 15 sec, eight between eight to 15 seconds to get the play going. Sort of a faster pace for the Bears. It'll be second down and short. The give to LB3. Lamont Brown the third inside the 20. Plows his way to about the 16-yard line. That's a 10-yard pickup for LB3. That's a Morgan State first and 10. We talk about a Morgan State running game that has struggled coming in to this football game. Just over about 150 yards or 130 yards so far this season for the Morgan backs. Tailback, LB3 gets the call. 15-yard line. LB3 fights his way forward out of bounds at about the 11 yard line about eight yard chunk for lb3 as he's written out of bounds at about the 10 they're going to mark him out actually at the 12. it's there the bears will go to work with a second and four well you, when you when you're going against the dead last defense in the conference then you should recognize that we're going to run the football just a little bit more than what we've run in the past bears go near side has pitch to the tailback lamont brown the third cuts it back inside not a lot of room he's going to be stuffed after about a one or two yard pickup Dell State defensively, Jihad Nightbear, the safety came up to make the tackle for DSU. Maybe about a yard pickup for LB3. It'll be third down and four. Rain starting to pick up just the pace and intensity. Been off and on all morning. Raining steadily right now here at U Stadium. LB3 gets the call inside the 10. Holy marker is down. Let's check out the flag. Not a lot of running room for Lamont Brown the third. He's corralled by Brian Cavaconti. The linebacker, senior backer, wrapped him up, but again, a marker down. First marker of the afternoon, holding call against a Morgan State football team that is averaging 100 yards per game in penalties. And over 300 yards so far in penalties during the course of this season. So if the Bears are going to have a successful 2016 campaign, they're going to have to clean things up. After the penalty. After the penalty, 10-yard step off. It'll be third down. It's called third and 13. Bears do it from the 22-yard line. Need to get to the eight. 
to move the sticks. Andrews to throw. He'll fire and jump. Thomas Martin can't catch up. Going to be an incomplete pass. He was locked up one-on-one -on -one near sideline with Gary Melton Jr., the senior defensive back for Delaware State. Incompletion brings about a fourth down. Line of scrimmage remains at 22. On comes Alex Rea. The Bears will look to get the first three points of the afternoon. Yeah, one of the stats around the Bears is struggling in the red zone this year, and that time just tremendous coverage by Gary Melton. One-on-one -on -one situation, and receiver just couldn't get any separation. This will come out of the Chris Clack hold. Will be from the middle of the football field. It will be 37 yards away. Will be the second make of a field goal for Alex Rea if he can connect. The Bears looking to take the early lead. Snap, spot, kick. It's blocked and corralled by the Hornets. They get it at about the 36 yard line. So after a tremendous drive by Morgan State on their opening possession, they come up empty. As Delaware State gets in on the kick, they block it, return it for about six or seven yards. It's first and 10 Hornets. They have it at their own 37. Defensive line penetration that time surged for Delaware State. They even come up with a big block. That Delaware State defense has given up over 500 games, uh, 500 yards a game so far this year. That time, the special team coming up for the play. Daniel Epperson is the quarterback, junior from Wrightwood, California. On first and 10, Epperson's going to go from the pistol. As that offense set, as Delaware State gets the turnover, they have their first touch of the afternoon early in this one. 11.46 remaining in the opening quarter. No score between the Bears and the Hornets. On the pitch, on the option. Penalty marker is down. Let's see what this one is all about. Not a lot of running room for the tailback, Kesley Tyler. As uh, on the option, wide side of the field, he was corralled and dropped. But again, a marker is down. Looks like this one's going to come back. Looks like this one's going to be a holding call against the Hornets. I'll tell you something really, really unusual to get a couple of sophomore uh, softball quarterbacks in rotation on the same football team. Delaware State likes to use two quarterbacks. Both of them happen to be Southpaws and, you know, hadn't really done much for them this season. But, you know, right now, just the woes of starting a football game not the way you want to. Southpaw in the game for the Dell State Hornets right now is a six foot one inch, 200 pound junior. Again, from Wrightwood, California. A certain Horn San Bernardino Community College transfer. His name is Daniel Epperson. Epperson from the pistol, four wide set. Epperson to throw, he'll fire in the flats, far sideline. Got a man, another marker is down, but a short gain of about five or six yards on the pass completion. We'll check out the marker. Two snaps for the Dell State Hornets on offense and uh, two penalties. Let's see if this one is again. Stops the clock with 11.23 remaining in the opening quarter. No score between the Bears and the Hornets. First MEAC game of the season for Delaware State. Morgan. Looking to go back to back in the MEAC last week. They got it done against Howard. Looking to get it done this afternoon against Dell State. This penalty against Morgan. Going to be a five yard step off. Offsides against Morgan. It'll be first down. It's called first down and 16 for the Hornets. They have it at their own 27 yard line. Again, Epperson going to load the pistol. He'll send one, two, three, four wide receivers in the set. Lone running back is Kesley Tyler. That's the sophomore from Elwood, Georgia as the Hornets appear to be calling an audible. Play clock is running down. Only four seconds on the play clock as Epperson awaits the snap from center from the pistol. Gets snap, play fake, left-hander, throws it in the flat, incomplete pass as he was looking down the seam for Mason Rutherford, the junior wide receiver. In coverage for the Bears, D.J. Johnson, a marker is down. They may call D.J. Johnson for pass interference. He's pleading his case. But I think the plea is going to be denied. Maybe pass interference against the Morgan safety, D.J. Johnson. Definitely tight coverage by D.J. Johnson. Looked like an effective play, but the uh, referee apparently saw it the other way. Again, guys, coming into the game, the Bears have penalized 33 times for over 300 yards. So if the Bears are going to be successful this year in MEAC play, they're definitely going to have to clean those things up. Well, if we could turn the, uh, the penalty yards into uh, rushing yards, yeah. I think we'd be okay. I what think do you think, we have Stan? more penalty yards than what we're averaging for penalty yards. After the penalty, first and 10 first for Delaware State, for automatic Hornets. first down. Ball spotted at the Dell State, Del State 36-yard line. Daniel Epperson, the quarterback on load the pistol. He'll send twin wides far side, another couple of twins 
to the near side. Lone running back is Tyler. Epperson awaits the set from center. Gets snapped. Play fake. Now actually the give to Tyler. Goes off the right side. Up to the 40-yard line. About a three or four-yard scamper before he's gathered and dropped as Brandon Griffin comes up to make the tackle. Dedrick Jones also on the case. It'll be second down and six. Hornets going to go without a huddle on second and six. From the pistol, fumbles the football, but the Hornets able to jump on their fumble. Quarterback couldn't handle it, but the running back, Tyler, fell on it. Going to lose a couple of yards. It'll be third down for Delaware State. So for the first time, weather conditions uh, starting to play a role in the game. That time, quarterback not able to handle the so snap third down and, and force a fourth for the Hornets. Down, uh, third down and long for Delaware State. Hornets go to work. Third side has mark on third. Let's call it eight. They do it from the 37-yard line. They have a single wide to the far, one wide to the near side. Quarterback is Epperson. He's up on the center. Actually, don't load the pistol as the Hornets looking to convert on third. Again, third and about eight. From the far side has Epperson waits a snap. He'll get that snap. Epperson to throw. Oh, far, far sideline. Got a man out there, but overthrows the target. Uh, was looking far sideline for the wideout, Aris Scott. He was covered one-on-one -on -one by Trey Epperson Ravel, pass, the Morgan corner on the far side. Incompletion brings about a fourth Morgan down, Scott. probable punting so situation for the Hornets. I, I tell you, when you look at Morgan, Morgan. State and these passing situations, they're playing Good very goal. aggressive on the corners. Martinez. Cover Prepare zero the last time out in the passing situation. This time, cover one with the free the safety. Bears. The Bears Martinez. really feel Martinez. as though that they can handle the wide receivers of Delaware State. By Dell Martinez is the punter for the Hornets. He sets up shop at about a 24-yard line. Thomas Martin back in sole safety to return for the Bears. Kicks here a Martin will field at the 27. Turn to his 30. Up to the 35-yard line, corralled and dropped at about the 37. That's where the second possession of the afternoon for the Bears will begin at their own 37-yard line. Special teams tackle Thomas Isaiah Martin. Williams puts the stop on Thomas Martin. It'll be first and 10 Morgan State. Tackle Bears have it at their own 37-yard line. That time, nice coverage uh, for the uh, special teams for Delaware State stopping the Bears for a short game. So the Bears will have a first down and 10. And 10 for Morgan State. Slightly over the 36-yard line. They're on 36 yards. Got a pause in the cause. Got a timeout on the field. We'll keep things right Bear here with 9.37 remaining Morgan in the opening athletic. quarter of play. LG, that's me. You got KP in the building. Android. Also got Martin Renard Stubbs the in the house. Morgan State football flavor. Third on the home Rossi front on this Saturday. Morgan State Bears against the Hornets of Delaware State. Bears had an impressive drive to begin the ball game, but it stalled as they got deep in Delaware State territory. A penalty back them up. Bears attempted a field goal, but it was for not blocked by the Hornets. Hornets unable to sustain the drive on their first possession of the afternoon. That's where we sit, gentlemen, early in this one on a soggy Saturday. It's Morgan nothing. It's Delaware State. MSU getting off to a fast start last weekend against Howard University, but one of the big problems for the Bears so far this season has been consistency. Can they, can they put a complete football game together and uh, try to come home with the win? So far, off to a good start offensively. Not able to complete the drive as Delaware State ended the drive with a blocked field goal. Bears going to hit the road one week from today. Nighttime affair down in Georgia, Savannah, Georgia. Taking on the surprising Savannah State Tigers winners over Bethune-Cookman University last weekend, upset fashion, overtime fashion. Savannah State Tigers, Morgan State Bears, one week from today in Savannah, Georgia. Well, LG, you know that Savannah State University is making an investment in football. You know, you take a look at the new stadium and, you know, developing a, something that's you know, kids you can recruit kids for, and so they're doing a tremendous job down there. Huge upset to the number three team in the, uh, well, it was the number three team in the Sheridan Black College Pro. Quick hits to Amante Peltit out of bounds on about the 45-yard line. Maybe about eight-yard pickup on the swing pass. Chris Andrews to Amante Peltit. A little shy of the first down. About a yard and a half, two yards shy. It'll be second and two for Morgan State. Bears go back to work, far side hash mark. I see twin wides near side, single wide to the far. Chris Andrews will stick it in the belly of the tailback. Go straight ahead, looking for first down yarders. I believe that should be enough to move the sticks. Orlando Johnson, the ball carrier for the Bears. He has three yards. He has a Morgan first and ten. Tell you what, Chris Andrews looking for a big game today here at Hughes Stadium. 
last weekend completing 34 of 69 passes, 300, 490 yards. So it's first down, goal for Kent State. Kent State Bears going to work back to pass. Andrew Chris in the pocket. Plenty of time. Rolls to his left. Put back. Downfield. Got a man up there. Makes the catch. Ricky Fisk got a bounce. Inside the 10. Out about the 8. First and goal for Arns and Blue. Andrews the fist. The Bears in business. Deep in Delaware State territory. Well, what do you say about a kid like Chris Andrews? Repeatedly he's shown that, you know, his poise, not panicking under pressure. The fifth year uh, quarterback out of Wagner. Uh, transfer here. Just continues with the experience just to be cool under pressure. Talbot gets a call, quick bounce outside, but nothing there. O.J. reverses his field, trying to turn the corner. O.J. at the 10, O.J. at the 5, O.J. down at the 1, but a marker is down. Let's see if this one is coming back. They started near side. O.J. didn't have anything near side. He swung it back to the far side. Did have the corner momentarily. Was tackled at about the 1 or 2 yard line, but another marker down. It's going to be a holding call against Morgan. This one will be against Deshaun David, the Morgan tight end. So the Bears doing the backstroke once again when they get in the red zone. They back up. Ball going to be spotted at the 18. Orlando Johnson, pure speed. That time, unfortunately, a holding call. And go back to that uh, long pass. I was even more impressed by the catch of Rick, Ricky Fisk. His damn conditions out there. He was able to ride that football for a big catch. Andrews to throw. He'll fire. End zone. Corner of the end zone. Broken up incomplete. Looking for Ricky Fist. Ricky Fist well covered over there in the corner by Gary Melton. Incompletion. We'll bring about second down and goal to go. Line of scrimmage for the Bears remains the 18. Of course, last week and the Bears got off to a fast start against Howard University. They'd like to get off to a fast start today against Mary State. Yeah, but again, the struggles have been the red zone, guys. You know, the Bears can't seem to score in the red zone. They can make big plays, score the football, but when it comes inside the 20, we've been having some problems. It'll be second down. Goal to go from the 18-yard line. The kick to the tailback. LB3 powers his way inside the 15, down to about the 11. About a six- or seven-yard pickup. Tough yards for the Morgan tailback as the Bears looking to chip away here as uh, now they face a third down. And goal to go. LB3 gets about six or seven. He comes out of the ball game. He's replaced by Eric Harrell and that Morgan State back here. Eric Harrell, the young man that the uh, coaching staff is big on, averaging so goal over five for goals, State. close to five That's yards to carry, and gained about 50 yards a week ago in Tower. It'll be third down. Bears need 13 for a touchdown. Andrews to throw. Chris is in the pocket. Has time. He'll float it. Corner of the end zone. Got it out there. Well, you know, you look at this kid, Chris Andrews, you look at his experience, you look what he's done, you know, and slowly he's climbing his way to the top in terms of quarterback rankings, quarterback efficiency, all the stats in terms of total rushing yards, all-purpose yards. This kid is climbing a lot in these teams because, you know, of the experience, the uh, just the poise, and just a great recruit from Morgan State. Point up the touchdown. It will come courtesy of Alex Rea out of the Chris Clack hold. Snap, spot, kick. Point out the touchdown is up. Point out the touchdown is no good. Looks like a little wide to the right. We're going to step aside. We're going to take the time out. Time out comes at 7.48 remaining. Opening quarter of play. As we step aside, your score. Morgan State Bay is six. Delaware State Hornets nothing. You're listening to Morgan State University football. I said, no, you just put your hands up. Yeah, yeah there you go. It's on you, man. Yeah, it's on you. <laughs> 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 
Stanford. Kicking off for Morgan State, number 12, Alex Rand. Returning for Delaware State, Bryson McKinnon, and number 12, Tyler Selby. Welcome back to U Stadium, Earl C. Banks Field, the campus of Morgan State University. On the kickoff, the Bears go on sides, came close to recovering the onsides kick, but apparently the ball sneaked out of bounds, and so as a consequence, Dell State will have the rock. First and 10 for the Hornets. They're down early to Morgan by a six to nothing count. We have 738 remaining. We're in the opening quarter of play. Dell State goes back to work on offense. But really more of a pooch type kick. What they wanted to do is drop it over the front line, but I'm seeing with field conditions like it is, you see that the ball didn't get the height that it should get because the way that the play is set up is that when you pooch it in the air, your outside guy will receive It's actually supposed to catch the ball in the air and continue to run down the field. That time, not enough air on the ball. Bears give up field position. They'll be first and 10 Hornets. They have it at their own 48. Their second possession of the afternoon. They trail 6-0. Trips to the far side, single wide to the near. Quarterback is Daniel Epperson. Short drop, Epperson to throw. Pressure comes, he'll fire. Making the catch inside of Morgan territory, down at about the 42-yard line. That's going to be close to a 10-yard pickup. Looks like that will be enough to move the sticks as Mason Rutherford, the junior from San Bernardino, makes the catch. First and 10 Hornets, they have it at the Morgan 41. They go without a huddle. Epperson will get it to the tailback. Wide side of the field, not a lot of room to run. To Rod Roberts, the Morgan defensive end, tracks down the ball carrier. Only about a one or maybe two yard pickup. Not much for Bryson Elaine, the sophomore from Wilmington. It'll be second down and eight. Again, the Hornets go no huddle. Trips to the far side, single wide to the near. Bryson Elaine is the lone back. Daniel Epperson is the quarterback. Epperson in the pocket. Hill at the throw. Here comes pressure. Up the middle. He's going to be draped and dropped. Up the gut came the inside backer, Greg Gibson, all up in the mug of Epperson. Drops him at about the 50. That's a 12-yard loss. It'll be third down and 20 for the Hornets. That time, Gibson bringing pressure from the inside. You talk about a Morgan State defense that is looking to just try to put together a complete game. Really had some big expectations coming in. Uh, to the season, had two tough opponents as their penalty flags in play. The sack is wiped off the slate, Nard, a offsides call against Morgan. So again, penalty problems continue to plague the Bears. Had a big time sack, but offsides backs them up. It'll be second down and four for the Hornets. They have it in Morgan territory at the 34 yard line. Trips to the far side, single wide to the near. Bryson Elaine is the lone back. Epperson will load the gun on second and four. He'll await the snap from center. Near side has, gets the snap to give to Elaine. Goes off the right side of running room. Inside the 30, first down yardage as he pecks and claws his way to the 28. No move the sticks. It'll be first and 10 for the Hornets. Again, a Morgan defense trying to put together a complete solid effort. Penalties getting in the way in the first down and 10 for Dell State. Dell State does it from the 28 yard line to give to Bryson Elaine. He goes right up the middle. Not a whole lot this time. Maybe gets two or three yards. Ja Franklin, Morgan State knows on the tackle, along with uh, Chris Gomez. It'll be second down and eight for the Hornets. Hurry up offense. Again, they go without a huddle. Chips to the far side, single wide to the near on second and eight. Epperson will await the snap from center. The junior gets snapped, left hand will fire. In flats, got a man just outside the 20 at about the 22-yard line. Wrapped up by Dedrick Jones is a receiver, Aris Scott. The senior Ever from Harrisburg will be shot of the first down. They're marking shot. about three yards shot. Ball will be at the 23. It'll be third and three for the Hornets. Third down and two. And I'll tell you right Hornets. now, Morgan State continues to play this man-to-man -man on the outside. You can see the Dell State's the Morgan State slash, 21 yards. Looks for the setup, guys, to stop and go, uh, to slant and go. 
again to Bryson Elaine. Penalty flags fly as Elaine fights and claws his way to about the 15 yard line. That would be good enough for a first down, but let's see what the flag is all about. Stops the clock with 518 remaining in the opening quarter. Morgan with the early six to nothing lead. Looks like Delaware State's backing up. Yeah, looks like this call is going to be against the Hornets. Personal foul, shot block against the Hornets. Dell State going to have to back it up. Again, talk about a Morgan defensive unit trying to put together a solid effort this afternoon. Got pushed around for over 200 yards rushing last weekend against Howard University. They don't want to see the same thing happen again on this Saturday. After the battle, third down to 17. The they do it from the Morgan 36 the yard line. Quarterback is Daniel Morgan State 36 yard line. The junior has his offense set. Trips to the far side, single wide to the near. Up the center throw. Quarterback drop. Looks to run. Hits the middle. Drops the throw. 25 yard line. Epperson spilled at about the 20. Maybe a step shy of the first down. Don't think he got quite enough. Epperson. It'll be fourth down. 15 yards on the play. And two. And apparently, that will take the goal for it. On fourth down and two for the Hornets. Fourth down and two. Hornets are going to go. For the Hornets on the far side. Single line. Single line. Single line. 21 yards. And from the pistol. Gets the snap. The game to pass on the line. 15 yards. Inside the 15. Tripped up at the 14. He has seven yards. He has a day worse day. What's that time? Morgan State consistently in cover one. Quarterback running the football down the field. Defense is back secondary. Everybody's back turn. Too much opportunity right now for Dell State. Dell State goes to work without a Everson will keep the quarterback inside the 10. Fights his way to about the 8. He'll pick up about 5, maybe 6 yards. It'll be second down and four for the Hornets from the Morgan eight yard line. Daniel Dell State trying to take a, a page out of the Howard playbook, trying to run the, the football down the Morgan State. Again, no huddle offense for Dell State. Quarterback Epperson has the offense set. Gets snapped and centered again to Bryson Lane. Looks to bounce it outside, won't get to the outside. He's Drake, he's dropped. Morgan defense on the case to Mari Whitaker, the Morgan backer, inside linebacker, drops him. It'll be third down. They need about three, four first down. They need seven for a touchdown. Really tough to run between the tackles for the Bears, but in this 30 defense, teams are beginning to attack these smaller size outside linebackers. Third down, three for the Hornets. The deep in Morgan territory. Morgan State, seven yard line. The Morgan seven yard line. Daniel Epperson, the quarterback. This is the last one. We like to know who is allowed this man in the stands. Jason Lane is the lone running back. On the option, the pitch to Elaine has room inside the five, the two, the doorstep. Did he get in? Don't think so. Bryson Elaine does have enough for a first down, though. It'll be first and goal to go for the Hornets. They have it at the Morgan one yard. Nice, nice job that time by carry. Everson. He drew the uh, defensive end on that side, pitched the ball out, out and almost accounted gets, for a Dell State touchdown. First and goal. Hornets a the yard away from the doorstep. Bryson Elaine gets the call, gets back to the line of scrimmage. No further. He's chopped down by the interior of that Morgan defensive front. Dedrick Jones Bryson, they also came the up carry. and run support from his corner position. No It'll be second down and goal to go. Stop Again, the Hornets go without a Everson this time goes right behind center, looking for a little surge from his center. Don't think he got in. Yeah, didn't get there. Got to the doorstep, but he was denied entry. It'll be third and goal to go the for the Hornets. They'll stay going with the uh, no huddle in this drive, but also ran those big old offensive linemen down. That time they had no offensive surge. Well, it's tough to run between the tackles of, of, of Morgan State, and, you know, they get so great push up front. That's why teams have been continually trying to attack those outside linebackers. Who the loudest man? Fullback gets the call. He's in the end zone. Touchdown, Hornets. Just like that. One yard TD Touchdown. run to the outside. Mike Waters, the 5 foot 10 inch freshman from Philly, goes in from a yard out. Quick bounce outside. Takes the Hornets to pay dirt. We're tied. Hornets looking to break the tie, pending the point after. Wisdom in ZD is the place kicker. For the point as uh, the Hornets tip. looking to grab a lead. Snap, spot, kick. Point after touchdown is up. Point after touchdown is the extra all point good. Is good. We step aside. We take a timeout. It comes. The 209 remaining in the opening quarter. Delaware State. They have their first lead of the season. The first quarter. First quarter. Delaware Morgan State Hornets State. seven. Morgan State Bill is six. State, You're listening to Morgan State University football. Uh, 
Elaine. 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 Bryson Elaine. That scoring drive took 13 plays, 51 yards, 5 minutes and 29 seconds. We appreciate your continued support of the Morgan State Athletics. Returning for the Bears, number 49, Eric Morrell, and number one, Orlando Johnson. Kicking off for Delaware State, number one, Wisdom Nazidi. Official athletic apparel brand of Morgan State Athletics. Be sure to pick up your official Adidas Bears apparel online or at the campus bookstore near you. So it's first and ten for Morgan State at their 25 yard line. Welcome back, Lamont, Germany. A lot of Calvin Bridges, got Bernard Stubbs in the house. A little Morgan State football flavor on your soggy Saturday afternoon. Here on the Morgan State University South Campus, it's the Bears. It's the Hornets of Delaware State. Delaware State on top, 7-6 to six on a 5-yard, 2-yard touchdown run by Mike Waters. Hornets have the lead with 150 remaining in the opening quarter. Bears have the football. Cowback gets the call, goes straight ahead across the 30, out to about the 33-yard line. Let's give uh, Eric Correll a pickup of three yards. It'll be third down and three for MSU. And if you're a Morgan opponent scouting the game, you realize you have an opportunity to run the football. The Bears have given up over 200 yards a game. Uh, Russell giving up 216 last weekend against Howard University. Chris Andrews, quarterback from the pistol. He'll give to Eric Correll. Piles his way forward. Looking for first down yards. I think he got just enough. Needed to get to the 35, depending upon the spot, yeah, they're going to give him enough. They're going to move the sticks. It'll be first and 10 for Morgan State. Rain picking up in intensity in a big way. Coming down now in sheets here at Earl C. Banks Field, Hughes Stadium. The hardest rain of the day is falling at the very moment. The Bears are on the move just the right. They move it at the 35-yard line. Quarterback is Chris Andrews. Twin wides, double tight, single back. That back gets the call. Eric Correll falls forward across the 35, out to the 38. He'll put his way. It'll be second down and seven for Morgan State. Well, the rain sort of plays into the hands of the Bears. If, you know, you're going against the team that's dead last in the conference and, and, and the total defense and next to last in Russia uh, defense. And underneath the center right now, just really pushing the football right down the field. Again, the game to Eric Correll. This time he stood up to little or no game, just shy of the 40. May have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. No further than that. It'll be third down. Third down and seven for the Bears. They have it at their own 39. Well, we've already had a, a missed field goal, a block, extra, uh, block field goal, and a drop snap, a tip. So the weather conditions really playing a big role in this game so far. Far side hash mark, Morgan State offense will go to work, looking to convert on third down. We have a pause in the cause as the first quarter has come to a conclusion. 
We are going to step aside at the end of one quarter of play. Yes, sir. That was State University Hornets, seven. Morgan State University Bears, six. You're listening to Morgan State University football. Well, that was the same play that we got a pass interference call on. And DJ Johnson with no call on this one. Welcome back in. LG, that's me. Got KB, got Menard Stubbs, got Morgan State punting in the rain to Delaware State as it's falling fast and furious here at U Stadium. The punt by Alex Rea is airborne. It's going to take a bounce out of bounds at about the 30. But it's there. The Delaware State Hornets will go to work. First and 10 down state as we're underway here in the second quarter. Down state has the football, fellas. They have the 7 to 6 lead. And again, Lamar Bears having that same problem, finding consistency, start getting out to a good start, getting the ball in great field position, not able to capitalize on the first drive, and now having the, a three and out on this last drive with a hot Delaware State offense on the football field, and they realize now that they can probably run the ball against this Morgan State defense. It'll be first and 10 Hornets. They do it at the 28-yard line. They're on 28. One, two, three. Wides in the set. Daniel Epperson with the quarterback. Junior from California has that offense set. Dell State goes to work. Near side has more. Epperson from the pistol. Awaits the snap from center on first and 10. Gets the snap. Gets the Bryce in the lane. Runner up across the 40. 45-yard line. Midfield and more in the Morgan territory. Finally down at the 26-yard line. That's a 44-yard burst up the middle. As I checked that, not Bryce in the lane. That was the tailback, Mike Waters, who was able to make that happen. Dell State has it in Morgan territory at the 25. Another run right up the gut. This one inside the 20, down to the 19. Dell State pounding it against Morgan up the middle. Howard successful running the football a week in the go. Delaware State trying to find their groove on the ground. They have a second down and three at the 20. The give to the tailback, trying to swing it. Wide side of the field, going to be wrapped up at about the 25-yard line is Mike Waters. Coming up to make the tackle, Jordan Cry will be close to first down yardage. Looks like he'll be about a yard shy. It'll be third and one. Once again, Hornets going to go without a huddle. They go near side hash mark. They go looking to extend their seven to six lead. Epperson, the quarterback, from the near side hash. Gets a snap from center. Gets to the tailback. First down yardage and more inside the 15. 
down to the 13, pounding Morgan on the ground. It'll be first and 10 for Delaware. And not just pounding Morgan on the ground, doing it with intelligence. Morgan, early in the ball game, running the 34 tight. Now they open the 34 up wide. Now you see them going in between the tackles, kicking out on the uh, defensive end, coming right up the tackles hole. I tell you, here are the numbers, guys. 256, 217, and 216. Those are the rushing yardage. That is the rushing yardage the Bears have given up in these tackle first three football Brandon games Brandon this season. Griffin. Brandon Griffin makes the tackle on the last play. Loss of one. It'll be second and 11 for the Hornets. From the 14-yard line, Dell State offense goes to work. The give to the tailback right up the middle. Has a little room this time. Finally dropped at about the 10, about a five or six yard pickup as Bryson Elaine able to rip off six more. It'll be third down for the Hornets. Third down, let's call it seven. They have it at the 12. Again, they go without a huddle. Three wide receiver set. Daniel Epperson, the quarterback, has his offense set. Lone back is Bryson Elaine. Hornets on the move left to right. Threatening once again with 1250 remaining in the second quarter. They have the 76 lead. They're threatening to add to it. Daniel Epperson, the quarterback, will get the snap. He'll get the throw. Epperson with time. Fires across the middle. It's tipped. It falls incomplete. It'll be fourth down and seven for the Hornets. Line of scrimmage remains the 12. And it really gets tough for your Epperson defense now. Delaware State just got finished with a long scoring eight. drive. Morgan goes three and out, and now another State. long scoring drive. Now that's going to take its toll on Morgan State, State defense. Big fourth down here for Morgan. They, they're going to try to have to come up with a block or something. You don't want to fall too far behind this for the field goal in these field conditions. Delaware State looking to tack on three more. Going to be spotted at the 18. Will be a 28-yard effort. Snap, spot, kick. 28-yarder is all good. Delaware State tacks on three more. With 12.35 remaining in the second quarter of play, the Hornets increase their lead over Morgan State to 10 to 6. I tell you, LG, and set up by uh, the true freshman running back, uh, Mike Waters exploded on that drive uh, for about 45 to 50 yards, really put him in great position. And, you know, right now I just see a game of cat and mouse in terms of, you know, play calling for Delaware State. Morgan State, I mean, actually, when you look at what's happening, you know, you're running tight inside in terms of your 30. Then you open your 30 up where you got your defensive ends, like almost in an 8-9, like a 9 technique. And so uh, Delaware State is just, you know, they're running outside power. You know, when you're wide and backs are cutting it back up inside. And, you know, uh, right now, you know, the Bears has got to find some continuity. They're better off when they're in passing situations. Right now, they can't get Delaware State into as many. Uh, the and Dallas State has scored 10 unanswered. The latest points, 28-yard field goal by Wilson and Zidi. Comes after an eight-play, 60-yard drive. Consumed 214 off the clock. Gives the Hornets a 10-6 lead over Morgan State as we have 1235 remaining in the second quarter. Yeah, Laney lead the uh, MEAC in all-purpose yards at about 140 all-purpose yards a game. Bryson Elaine. A very productive first half, 11 carries, 33 yards. And the Dell State Hornets, as a result, have the lead. It sits at 10 to 6. Kick air boom. OJ Fields at the 10. Straight to hit 15. Orlando Johnson across the 25, across the 30. Keeps the legs moving. Finally down at about the 33 yard line. It's there. The Morgan State offense will go to work. First and 10 work to do orange and blue. They trail 10 to 6 with 12 28 remaining in the second quarter. If I'm not mistaken, LG, uh, looks like that was Waters on the tackle that time, the true freshman running back on special teams that time. Not only does he run the ball, but he tackle folks that's attempting to run the ball as well. Five foot ten inch freshman from Philly, Mike Waters, will be first and ten for the Morgan State Bears. They do it from their own 32 is where they mark the football. Morgan going to go pistol. Chris Andrews is your quarterback. Sticks it in the stomach of the tailback running room across the 35-yard line. O.J. 
upended at about the 36. Let's give him four before the hole closed for Orlando Johnson, the Morgan State tailbacker. Sean Barrett, the senior linebacker from Jersey, makes the tackle. It'll be second down and seven for the ball. As the defensive woes for the Morgan Bears continue, as they continue to stop running games already in the first half, unofficial numbers, 110 rushing yards for Delaware State. Near side of hash mark, Bears go to work on offense. Got a man in motion, the give to the tailback, Orlando Johnson. He goes off the right side, won't go far as he stood up and stopped by the left side of that defensive Rush front. Let's get him to one, across Johnson. the 35 to about the 36 yard line for Orlando Johnson. It'll be third down and six for MSU. Well, right now, Dell State in this type of weather, which makes sense, is daring the Bears to throw the ball. They're in that one blitz back on every play. They are sending those linebackers in those gaps and, you know, just causing confusion up front for the Bears. Third down, Bears in search of five. Quarterback, Chris Andrews in the flats to Lamonte Poteet. Overshoots the target. Well out the uh, over the outstretched hands of Poteet. Also a little too tall for Poteet. Throw the marker down. Let's see what the penalty is about. Clock is stopped with 11-17 remaining in the second. Could be rushing the pass. I just saw at the corner of my eye, Andrews rolling it around, clapping his hands, and it appears they may catch the uh, defense on the roughing the pass. There's no question about it. It was Jacob Jones. Uh, Number 58 uh, appears to be the kid that uh, actually uh, 59, so Abdul, um, Alario. First down, Sophomore straight out of Brooklyn, penalized, so it'll be first and 10 for Morgan. Bears gonna do it on the Dell State side of the football field at the 49 yard line. Chris Sanchez is up on the center. The Morgan quarterback will give to his tailback. Looking for room off the right side is Orlando Johnson inside the 45, down to about the 43. We'll give him four, maybe five. It'll be second and five for the bid. Orlando Johnson, uh, one of the toughest 160 pound running backs you might see. Guys, great speed, great toughness, great awareness. That time, get a positive game for the Bears. It's going to be a second down. Five yards to go, yards. 10 minutes and 50 seconds left in the first half. From the 43 yard line of Delaware State, pitch to the tailback, wide side of the field, penalty markers are down, Orlando Johnson is down. Back to the line of scrimmage, no further for the Morgan State tailback as he is gathered and dropped by Jihad Nybeer. The safety came up to make the tackle. This penalty is gonna work against Morgan and the Bears have had penalty problems all year long. This is penalty number seven for 66 yards. We're in the first half here. Bears have been averaging 100 yards per game and appear to be well on their way to another 100-yard effort in the penalty column this afternoon against Delaware State. Really didn't like that call. The Bears right now doing a great Second job down. and running a little power and, and a little outside zone. And that time on the sweep not available. The pass in the flats, far sideline. That's an incompletion. Was looking far sideline for Thomas Martin. Incompletion will bring about a third down for Morgan. It'll be third and 15. Line of scrimmage remains the Morgan 47. Second straight pass that simply got away from Chris Andrews. That time too high for Curtis Martin over down the right end. Third down, 15 yards to go for Morgan State first down. Trips to the near side, single wide to the far. Your quarterback is Chris Andrews. Short drop, Chris to throw. Chris up, he'll pump, under pressure, has to scoot and run. Looking to turn the corner at midfield, up to the 50, down to the 42 yard line. He's gonna be about three or four yards shy of the first down. Tried to improvise there, but was finally Chris shut down Andrews. by Brian Cavaconti, the freshman linebacker from Portsmouth, Virginia. Starting as a freshman for Delaware State. Stops the Morgan quarterback about four yards shy of a first down. It's fourth down. Probable punting situation for the Bears. No question, but you see the Bears are at second and five. When you're at second and five, you got an opportunity right now to really easily get a first down. And we went with the sweet play and called it and got a penalty on it. Just the killing drives sometimes, not with just plays. Not with just penalties, but also with play selection. Punts in the air, and we got a penalty marker down. Apparently, a fair catch was signaled for it. Must have been a real quick fair catch signal, because uh, I barely saw it. Morgan did not react as if it was a fair catch. They tackled the returner, and we'll see what the officials decide here as the flag flies with 9.36 remaining. Second quarter, Dow State has football. Dow State has a lead. 10-6 over the Morgan State Bears. That time... Uh, was like a Wayne Sharp play. 
uh, on that one. That's the old North Carolina high school, public high school football joke there. They're having a big time discussion, whatever the situation is. I didn't see it for the officials. I didn't see it. I kick. did not see a well, that He did. It was quick. That's the story of the guy who hit the guy who calls fair catch. I didn't see a fair catch signal. Is that what you tell the coach? That is the story. Let's see what the deal is. Oh, you got the other guys who didn't care whether you call fair catch or not. That's the Wayne Sharp story. Well, so apparently the officials are going to pick up the flag. Uh, apparently uh, they discussed whether or not there was a fair catch signal. And I know I never saw one. Uh, Morgan just tackled him as if there was no fair catch signal. There was a flag drop, but apparently after the discussion, uh, I guess they decided nobody saw a fair catch. And, and not only that, the receiver started running the football. Your 50, 50 so, 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 no flag. Hornets will have the rock. First and 10 from their own 14 yard line. Bears got to find a way to stop this running game with Delaware State and get it down on the ground, KB. That's a big reason why they need it 10 to 6. There's no question about it. You know, when you have one of the most productive football players in the conference that can do so many different things. You expect that he's going to touch that ball at least 35 to 40 times, you know, in a ball game for you to be effective, very doable, uh, doable as, a, as a running back. And it just gives you so many options. If you look at Dell State offensively throughout the first, uh, throughout the first half, once a lane had entered the ball game, you start seeing a lot more of second and four second and you know five and down which gives them more opportunities to do things morgan state open up in that man-to-man -man type package cover zero cover one and let me tell you something when they're going to cover zero they're not spying the quarterback folks they're, they're, they're spying uh a bison a lane that's who the uh that's who the spies watch and, 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 and well so, but you know, right now, Delaware State is able to control because of first down, what they're able to do on first down, it gives them so many options for the young South Paul quarterback on second and third down. First and 10, orange and blue, actually Delaware State with the rock. Orange and blue, Morgan State, big in on B. Bears with the three front defensively. Dallas State goes pistol. Quarterback Daniel Epperson, all the way to snap, get snap, short chop, Epperson to throw, pump fakes, here comes pressure, gonna be drop inside the 10 at about the eight yard line. Morgan State drops the quarterback, they went away from the run game, tried to pass that time, but not a lot of time. Brandon Griffin comes in to uh, sack the quarterback, the Morgan backer, outside linebacker. It's gonna be a second down 15 for the Hornets. Epperson will await the snap from center. He'll do it from the pistol. He'll do it with four wide receivers in the set. On second and long, Epperson will give to the town back. Right up the middle goes Waters, spins forward to about the 15. Let's give him about four yards. It'll be third and 11 for Delaware State. So long down third and 11 for Delaware State. Huge defensive uh, play for Morgan State University because if they can stop Delaware State, the Bears should get some third down and 11. Position. Again, Hornets go with that huddle. They send trips far side, single wide to the near. Epperson to throw. Daniel in the pocket. Fire near sideline. Going to be incomplete. We're looking for Aero Scott. He was locked up one on one with Bedrick Jones. Good coverage by Bedrick. Going to be fourth down. Probable punting situation for the Hornets. So, so what you see on first and second down in this series, the Bears in cover two. The young quarterback never saw the cover two. That's why you saw when he when he dropped, he couldn't find where he was looking for a one on one situation. That time, they did it, Bears did it on first and second down. Now I'm seeing everything that's in front of me in this tough weather. On third down, they came with the package blitz, cover zero because of the bad weather, put pressure on the quarterback, not able to complete the ball. Great defensive series by the Bears. Hornets have to punt it away with a punter, punting from his own end zone, actually from about the two-yard line. Fielded by Thomas Martin on the fly at the 45, breaks a tackle, but won't break a second. He's wrapped up at about the 46, it's there. Morgan State offense go to work. They have the good field position. Let's see if they can do anything with it. First and 10, orange and blue. They have it at their own 46. Work to do. 8:21 remaining. Quarter number two. Morgan down to Delaware State, 10 to six. There is a penalty flag down far sideline. We'll check out the marker as the clock is stopped at the 8:21 mark of the second quarter. Uh, you you, you got to block the gunner. That time, uh, I thought that the punt kind of outkicked the coverage in. Great opportunity for uh, Martin to get a great return, but just didn't get great blocks uh, on the Gunners that time. Uh, every Both Gunners had a pretty decent shot, and the second was able to hold on, but 
You got to block those guys. Yeah, did a good job getting away from the first guy, but couldn't get away from the second. Wouldn't have mattered. Penalty was against Morgan, and so they're going to back it up. Even if he had gotten away, wouldn't have counted as they're stepping off another penalty against Morgan. This one, 10 yards uh, for Morgan State, blocking the back. It will put the ball at the 35. Morgan will go to work first and 10. They have it at their own 35 yards. So for Morgan State. At their 35 More than about five. 75 yards and penalties, and we're still in the second quarter. First and 10 for the Orange and the Blue. They do it near side has mark. Andrews to throw. Off the play fake. Here comes pressure. He'll toss it to R RB3. Makes a tackle at the 30. Down the sideline, 40. 35 yard line out of bounds. At the 47 yard line, Chris Andrews in all kinds of trouble. Just kind of flipped it the best way he could. To Lamont Brown the third, he made a little something out of nothing. Matter of fact, that'll be 12 yards. That'll be a first and 10 for Morgan State. Is that experience of a, a, a senior or graduate quarterback thinking on his feet that time, getting something out of nothing? I, I don't think you can rattle this guy. Yeah, I've, I've never seen him not compose in a situation. First and 10, and as the tailback gets the call, straight ahead he goes. Looking for about two or three yards off the left side is Lamont Brown the third. A couple of markers are down. Stops play with 7.53 remaining. Second quarter of play. This is going to be a hold. This will be against Morgan. Morgan over 80 yards in penalties here in the first half as they back up. Decent field position to begin the drive, but again, keep shooting themselves in the foot with penalties. The Bears are going to have to back up. And I even heard uh, compliments about Andrews in uh, West Virginia. Some of the people in West Virginia said, Norman, these quarterbacks come in here, and they just rattle. He said, that guy just stood in there. And he took a couple of hits that he shouldn't have taken, so he took him, took him out of the game early, but he got a lot of confidence against Marshall. After I tell you what, two more penalties, and we're going to be down, making a phone 20, call to the Guinness Book of World Records. 80 yards of penalties, and we're just in the first half. Back to pass, Andrews. He'll fire off the back foot, got a man across the 40. Short gain of only about four yards to Thomas Martin. Across the 40 at about the 43. It'll be second down. Let's call it second and 15 for the Bears. Morgan goes to work, far side has, rain has lessened a little bit. It's coming down pretty swiftly uh, a few moments ago. Seems to have eased at least for the moment as the Bears go to work with a second down and 15. From their own 42-yard line. Andrews with the quick flip in the flats. Amante Poteet, he's tripped up by an ankle at about the 45. Picks up maybe about four or five yards. It'll be third down for Morgan. Let's go third and 12. Ball going to be spotted at the 44. Gain of two yards. Bears have it at their own 44-yard line, third looking to see if 13, they can convert here. State. Looking to see if they can do a little damage on offense. Looking to see at if they can climb on a 10-6 deficit. Tricks to the far side, single wide to the near, and drove to throw. Chris will fire. Far sideline has Thomas Martin. Martin fighting his way up field, but finally tripped up at about the 45. He'll be shy of the first down. About a 10-yard pickup, but he Martin. needed 12, so it will be... It will be spotted at the 45. It'll be fourth down and two for the Bears. They have it at the Hornet 45. I think Fred Ferry's thinking about going for this one. Um, you know, right now, third and about two or three. And I tell you, what can you say about Chris Andrews? Um, that time, all out blitz, you can see uh, four wide receivers, four guys cover zero. Um, they've, they rushed seven players, and Chris Andrews never rattled deliver a pretty good football. And right now, you know, it's a shame about the penalties because you can see that there's just so much productivity that's going on on offense, and without the penalties, this is a different ball game altogether. But you know, you, you, you gotta, you, you gotta. You, if you're Fred, I agree with Fred Ferrier right now if he decides to go for it because now he does have positive momentum going, and, and why not? Why not? Why not? I mean, you have to find some momentum for the football team. I'm learning to learn. That. Fourth down for the Morgan State Bulls. Ball spotted at the 45-yard line. They need to get to the 43 to keep the drive alive. And indeed, Morgan has decided to go for it. On fourth and two, from the Hornet 45, the Orange and Blue are going to go. Ten wides, double tights. Run back is LB3, Lamont Brown the third. The quarterback up front the center is Chris Andrews. From the far side, has Mark. Morgan's going to go for it. Play fake. Andrews rolls left. Chris looking for the first down marker. That was a shoulder. Oh, nice. Picked up in it. It's a scoop by the Dale State Hornets. They have the rock. Deep in Morgan territory at the 32-yard line. With 
the scoop of the football was Jabir and Jahar and Jabir. The Hornets have the rock. They turned Morgan over. Miss Andrews did have first down yardage, but could not hang on to the football. Very wet, soggy conditions. Rain intensifying once again. Hornets have the rock. First and 10, Delaware State. They have it at the Morgan 32. I got to call that a Mike Tyson tackle. You know, right on the butt in the helmet, right on the football that time. Just a great tackle. Chris Andrews did a tremendous job, but just a solid tackle that time by the defender, Dell State. Hornets have the rock. Look at their place, their 10 to 6 lead. Look on their side, has your quarterback, Daniel Epperson. Four wides in the set. Epperson fires in the flats behind the intended target. We're looking for Al Scott. Scott covered near sideline by Dr. Jones. Incompletion will bring about a second and 10 for the Hawks. I tell you, you look at how Phil Turf has changed the way football games are played in the rain. You know, years ago in a muddy field, you know, the footing and everything. And Fred, only guy who could catch the ball in the rain was Fred Bolivico. Second and 10. Hornets near side has part. The junior, Daniel Epperson, is your quarterback. Trips to the far side, has a single wide to the near. Epperson will wait to snap the center. He'll get snapped. Epperson on the option. Pitch to the tailback. Inside the 30 out of bounds at the 28. Marker is down. We'll check out the flag. Stops play with 6-11 remaining before half. Delaware State 10. Morgan State 6. And I'll tell you right now, this kid, Mike Ward, is definitely a tough football player. M. Hotep High School uh, uh, ranked number 10 in the nation last year. USA Today and uh, full, uh, Pennsylvania State Champions in football. Solid job over there at M. Hotep High School out of Philly. Holding call against the Hornets. Delaware State going to have to back up. Able to get a positive game, but it's wiped off because of the hole. The market from the spot of the foul. Ball going to be spotted at the 40. It'll be second down and about 18 for the Hornets. They have it at the Morgan 40-yard line. Quarterback is Epperson. He has twin wides, far side. Single wide to the near. Mike Waters is the lone back. Your quarterback is Daniel Epperson. We're inside of six minutes remaining before intermission. Hornets have the 10 to 6 lead. They have the rock. Epperson gets the snap. Play fake. Rolls left. He'll dump it in the flats. Tight end makes the catch, but he's tripped up in the open field. Good open field takedown. That time by Brandon Griffin. He's dropped at about the 37 yard line. It'll be third down. It's called third down and 16 for the Hornets. Morgan defense has that snuck third down and 15. Hornets again, goal, fast pace. They go hurry up, they go without the hunt. On third and 14. Upperson, the quarterback, has one, two, three wide receivers. Drake to the near side. Lone back is Mike Waters. It's a third down and 15 for the Hornets. Looking to convert, looking to increase their 10 to 6 lead. Daniel Epperson, the quarterback, going to get a timeout. As the Hornets on offense saw the play clock winding down, they get a timeout. Gives us an opportunity to take a 10 second pause. We're going to take a 10 second timeout for station identification. You're listening to Morgan State University football. You know, I still can't believe McDonald's is serving breakfast all day. It doesn't get any better than this. Lamont, Germany, along with Bernard Stubbs, Calvin Bridges up in the house. It's Saturday in the city. We got a little football play the first. Serving it up, Morgan State style. Orange and blue doing the ball against the Delaware State Hornets. Been a sloppy game for Morgan State. Sloppy in many ways, more ways than one, as the uh, wet weather continues to fall here at L.C. Banks Field. Morgan State, Delaware State. 10 to 6 is the advantage for the Hornets. Morgan with the first six of the afternoon. Dell State has since scored 10 unanswered. They're up four with 5-11 remaining in the second and quarter. Talk about a Morgan State team that had to come from behind. Got off to an early lead last weekend, but in the final minutes able to score a touchdown with 30 seconds left to play in the game. The uh, sophomore running back, Horrell, getting the job done on the ground for the Bears. So the Bear defense right now has to hold tight on the third down and 15. Bears looking for the stop sign here. On third and the Bears and the Bears squad who I know who is the loudest fan in the stand. Has three rods flipped to the near side. One man in the backfield. That's Mike Waters. On third and 15, going to load the pistol. Waters gets the snap. He's in the pocket. He has time. He'll fire. Near sideline. Catch made along the seam, I believe. Another one called incomplete. 
as uh, the receiver had to try to sprawl out down the seam inside the 15, but the pass comes loose, incomplete. It'll be fourth down, and I believe they're outside of field goal range. I believe the Hornets will have to give it up. I tell you, I'm still impressed with what I'm seeing out of the running game of Delaware State. That's a field goal, KB. Wow. 55-yarder. Okay. As uh, Wisdom and Zidi is going to attempt a 55-yarder in the rain, but wait a minute. Timeout Hornets, and they may be rethinking this. Thought they may be slightly outside of field goal range, but if he got it like that, he got it like that. Well, we want maybe they want to see if it's wise <laughs> to go with wisdom uh, on this particular punt kick. Yeah, it would be a lengthy one, 55 yards, and again, in not ideal conditions. Hornets looking to pad their 10 to 6 lead, but they do call a timeout, so they may be reconsidering. They may instead go for the field position and try to put Morgan back by punting, but uh, initially. They went for the field goal. Let's see if they stick with that game plan. If they miss, Morgan obviously would have decent field position on the exchange. We'll see whether the Hornets change their mind as uh, Coach Carter, the head coach of the Delaware State Hornets, making up his mind if he wants to see Wisdom and Zidi attempt what would be, again, about a 55-yarder into the wetness that is Earl C. Banks used stadium. I'll tell you what, one of the things about uh, Coach Kenny Carter that, you know, everybody knows his resume. He's uh, been an assistant at Louisville under Charlie Strong, and, you know, he's been at Florida under Urban Meyer. This guy can get players, and you look at the freshmen that he has out there on that football field where the starters are guys that get a lot of playing time. The future for Delaware State football is extremely bright. Apparently they have changed their mind. They are going to punt it away. The punt's airborne going for the pooch. Trying to pin Morgan back deep. Ball bounces out of bounds. Takes a Morgan bounce before going out of bounds. They're going to spot it at the 20-yard line. That's where the Morgan offense will go to work with a first and 10. And I think that was probably the wise decision not to go for the field goal. Uh, you want to play the field position game here as you draw close to the end of the first half. Morgan going to be 80 yards away from pay dirt. First and 10, orange and blue. The Bears have it at their own 20. As Morgan continues to try to find some consistency, and we talked about the penalties, that's part of it, guys. They just have not been able to find so the real rhythm on offense State since that opening drive. At their 20-yard line. That'll be first and 10. Morgan State Bears will do it far side hash. They'll do it at their own 20-yard line. Quarterback is Chris Andrews. Andrews will give it to the tailback, looking for some room across the 20, LB3, across the 25, lowers the shoulder, lays out at about the 27, Rush about seven, maybe eight three yards three on the pickup the for Lamont Brown the third. It'll be second down and three for the day. LB3, the only running back on the roster eight with eight over 100 yards, yards rushing play. net uh, coming into this uh, football game. But you know what second and short means in football lanes, right? What do you mean, man? It means to go for the After touchdown right now. Okay, we're going to see what the Bears do. No, they're not going to do that. They're going to give it to LB3. He gets the first down across the 30, out to the 33-yard line. Six more for the stats of Lamont Brown the third. It'll be a first and 10 MSU. Bears do it from their own 33-yard line. They do it with 420. Remaining quarter number two. Morgan down 10 to 6 for the Hornets of Delaware State. So it's first down. Morgan's going to go through the line. He has a single one to the near quarterback. Andrews to throw. He'll fire. Far sideline, roll over the intended target, Amante Poteet, far sideline. It will be third down so for the Bears. Down second down, I should say. Second and 10. State. Probably for third or fourth time today. A misfire by Chris Andrews. Had a man open, but simply threw the football behind him. As a result, Hornets digging in on defense. Morgan State trying to make it happen on offense. On second and 10, Chris Andrews from the pistol. He'll fire again, way off target. That time looking for Thomas Martin. Took a hit as he let fly, but no flag is down. It'll be third and 10 for Morgan State. Now, really having difficulty with the outside routes uh, is, is the Bear offense. And, you know, we really haven't seen much crossing routes, anything underneath or anything like that. Um, you know, really like to see them expand the range of the passing game. Third down and 10. Morgan does it from their own 33. Three wide receiver set, Andrews to throw. Pressure comes again. He throws it well over the outstretched arms 
of Thomas Martin. Accuracy issues for Chris Andrews as he's just overshooting everybody. That one is incomplete. That brings about a fourth down. It'll be fourth and 10. The Bears will have to give it up. We, we had a chance to do the Lincoln Cheney game to open the season on a Thursday night and the, uh, I think it was the Lincoln quarterback, had the same problem. He, he couldn't throw the out routes, but he was doing a great job of throwing the in routes. Of course, we have Willie Gillis Jr. The uh, big tight end, so maybe we should try to look for him a couple of times. I, I mean, sometimes as a quarterback, you overcompensate for the weight of a wet football. And uh, right now, not able to get it to the guys. Punts in the air, takes a Dell State bounce inside the 35. We're going to be down by Morgan at about the 33. That's where the Hornet offense is going to go to work. We have 350 remaining. We are in quarter number two. We do it from U Stadium, Earl C. Banks Field. Morgan State campus, Hornets have the 10 to 6 lead. Morgan got the scoring started. 7.38 in the first quarter. Amante Poti hauled in a 12-yard touchdown pass. Point after was no good. The Hornets answered. One-yard TD plunge. Mike Waters, they took the lead. They made their PAT. They have since added a field goal, 28 yards in length. That's where we sit. With 3.50 remaining. We're in quarter number two. Hornets had the football. Hornets had the 10 to 6 lead over Morgan State. Daniel Epperson is the quarterback. Has that offense set. Hornets going to go to work. First and 10 with four wide receivers in the set. The QB, Epperson, going to go from the pistol. Long back on his right hip is Bryson Elaine. As the Hornets look to pad their 10 to 6 advantage. Epperson will await the snap from center. Play clock is down to five seconds. Epperson finally gets that snap to give to Elaine. Across the 30, out to the 35. Finally dropped at about the 36. Able to pick up about four yards. It'll be second and six for the Hornets. They go no huddle. Once again, they go hurry up. Epperson, the quarterback, gets the quick snap again to give to Bryson Elaine. This time, not much. Going to be stood up, stuffed, dropped. No gain on the play as Damari Whitaker, the Morgan inside backer, makes the tackle. It'll be third down and five for the, for the Hornets. Yeah, I'm looking just at tough running right now on the inside, and right now, bad defense in front, just stingy with it. Third down and five from the 37. The Hornets once again going to go no huddle. They go one, two, three, four wides in the set. They set up shot near side hash mark, looking to convert a third down and five. Daniel Epperson, the quarterback. Bryson Allain, the lone running back. Epperson awaiting the snap. He'll get the snap. Epperson to throw. Quarterback draw. Hesson across the 40. He's finally spoiled at about the 43. I think he has enough for a first down. The quick feet, quick thinking of Daniel Epperson moves the sticks. That'll be first and 10 Hornets. Yeah, that time just, you know, great coverage that time by the Bears secondary. And quarterback uh, intelligent enough to just tuck it and get what he can get. Got a first down. First and 10, Dallas State. They have it at their own 43-yard line. Epperson will give to Bryson Elaine. He's wrapped up at about the line of scrimmage. Outside linebacker Brandon Griffin, first man to the ball carrier. Got some help from Greg Gibson. No gain on the play. It'll be second down and two. That time is made by number 41, Greg Gibson. On offense, by and large, been getting it done on the ground. Not much on that play. It'll be second down. They're going to give him one. It'll be second down and nine. Quarterback is Daniel line. Epperson. Has the offense set. They set up shot. Near side has Mark. We approach two minutes remaining before half. Hornets with the 10-6 lead. They have the football. Quarterback Daniel Epperson. They'll give it to Mike Waters. Waters running real. Across the 45. Tripped up at about midfield. That's Brandon Griffin on the tackle. He's close to first Rest down. Yardage is Mike 25. Waters. He gets Mike it to about Porter. the 50. It'll be third and two for the Hornets. Stop They're going to go without a huddle. Quick snap to give the Waters, looking for first down yardage. Waters is going to be dropped a little shy of the first down. Needed about three, got two. It'll be fourth down and short. Fourth down in the yard, maybe fourth and less than a yard for the Hornets. Let's see if Coach Cody decides to go for it. On fourth and one from the Morgan 48. And I tell you, I, the left side of that offensive line has been doing some work against the Bear defense, and it is unbelievable that those two guys are true freshmen on the football field. Hornets going to go on fourth and one from the 48. Hornet offense going to throw forward. The pass is overthrown and incomplete. It was looking along the far sideline. The pass a little too tall. Morgan turns over the Hornets on downs. that will be first and 10 Bears. They have it their own 48, but only 65 seconds. Remaining in the first half. Didn't like that play in the rain. Yeah, <laughs> Just didn't like it. And the good reason for not liking it has uh, been a hot rock to handle. 
It's an incompletion. It's first and 10 more than 65 seconds. Let's see if the Bears can do anything with it. Rain puts up in intensity. I mean, it's coming down big time right now. Here at L.C. Banks Field, U.E. Stadium on the Morgan State University campus. Quarterback Chris Andrews, tip from the near side, single wide to the front. Andrews looking to the tailback, looking for Matt Field as Orlando Johnson puts it back inside, inside the 45. Finally spilled at about the 40, pulled out eight yards on the pickup for OJ. It'll be second down and short for the Bears. But again, rain picking up big time with 50 seconds remaining in the half. Nine on the Chris play. Andrews will await the snap. Good snap. OJ gets the call right up the gut. Running room inside the 30. Still in the hit at the 25. OJ tripped up at the 24 by a shoestring. Boy, that was a big time saving tackle by the Hornets. Jihad Nebar as he stopped OJ at about the 25. Bears going to go with 36 seconds remaining. We're going to stop the clock, actually, as Chris Andrews with an opportunity to slow things down a little bit. Bears look to gather themselves as they have it at the 25-yard line with 34 seconds remaining. We are in the second quarter. Like O.J., um, Orlando Johnson shaking up a bit uh, on that last tackle. He's on the sideline right now being uh, tended to by the trainer. Every State offense goes to work. They have a second down and 10. Chris Andrews to throw. A screen pass was underthrown as he was looking for Lamont Brown the third, but again, Andrew Chris Andrews just been off target. Don't know if it's the left football, Lamont just Brown not third. finding a passing rhythm. Uh, he has really been missing set. receivers. That Board time, just a dump off, a screen the pass to Lamont Brown the third, incomplete. It'll be third and ten for the day. I tell you, Chris Andrews was in a big uh, quarterback competition with Khalil Trotman, not on the uh, roster anymore for Morgan because of academic reasons. But believe it or not, KB, he could be the second best quarterback on his roster. Oh, wow. Well, it was a good looking play that time, I thought. It just, you know, just couldn't deliver the football well, well, well designed play. And, you know, they had the big old offensive line out in front. And, uh, you know, we may be saying touchdown had he been able to complete that pass. But pass is incomplete. Once There's going to time out. Time out stops the clock with only 31 seconds remaining in the half. Bears were hoping to come away with something during the first half of play. And it doesn't look like it's going to be easy with Delaware State in the rain right now, standing in the way of Morgan and trying to chip away at what is. A 10 to 6 Delaware State Hornet lead. One yard touchdown plunge by Mike Waters. 28 yard field goal by Wisdom in Zidi. Morgan State's touchdown, 14 yard touchdown catch by Amante Petit. We The point after was no good. We sit at 10 to 6. Morgan, Dell State. So it's third down. It'll and be ten. third down. Bears need 10. They do it from the Hornet 25. They go three wide far, single wide near. Andrews to throw. Chris in the pocket. Thomas Martin. Claims the lead at 12 to 10. I'm telling you right now, the double move that Martin just put on the defensive back for Delaware State, I think we need to call child protective services. What a move. I mean, he stopped, he went, he stopped, he went. I don't think the kid knew where uh, Chris Martin was in that time. Bears going for the deuce on the point after touchdown, but it looks like they may have come up a little shy as the Bears went with the quick snap. We're going for the two-point conversion. And that will take on two more. Yeah, they get into the end zone. So the Bears. It's going to be 24 seconds remaining before intermission. Morgan, 14. Delaware State, 10. And the senior Thomas Martin uh, coming into the game, leading only 175 yards and receiving for 1,000 yards so in his senior career. And let me tell you something. Remember, Fred Furr is a winner. You know, everywhere he's been, he's won. You know, so, I mean, this is nothing new. What a gutsy call. What a well-prepared uh, situation planning ahead after the touchdown to go with the quick huddle and to push, you know, to go for two and uh, to really push that uh, 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 big old offensive line forward to get the double, the, the deuces. Fred Fur is a heck of a football coach, and, and I, I tell you, right now you can see that the momentum has come back on the side for the Morgan State Bears. What a play, what a throw, what a catch. What a great double move that time by the receiver and just a well-put-together play. So what are the Dell State Hornets going to do? They've got 20, 
four seconds to decide as that's all that's left before half. Morgan State, Delaware State Bears with the 14 to 10 lead. It is uh, Tyron Selby and Bryson Elaine. Back in dual safety to return for the Hornets of Delaware State. Alex Renner is the place kicker for the orange and the blue of Morgan State. He tees it up. He's about to give it up with the run up. Reyes kick is a pooch kick. Short kick up back fields at the 30. Signals for a fair catch. Right there at the 29 is where the Hornets will take over. First and 10, Delaware State. 24 seconds remaining before half. Another good, great coaching move. You don't kick the ball to the number one return guy in the conference ever. Indeed, the Bills avoided that, especially in the waning seconds of the first half. And as a consequence, Hornets have the rock 70 yards away from pay dirt. It'll be first and 10, Dell State. They have it at their own 30. Again, 24 seconds remaining in the half. Fair wide set, Daniel Epperson, the quarterback. They wait the snap center, gets snapped. Epperson fumbles the football, falls on his own fumble. And Dell State may just want to go into the locker room at this point. Wet football, you don't want to take any Epperson chances. Epperson falls on it at about the 22. Hornets don't have to snap the ball again before the half expires. I don't think they will snap the ball again. First half is going to expire without another snap. So we're going to go to animation, fellas. Morgan State, Delaware State at the end of the first half of play. Morgan begins the half with the first score, and they end the half with the last score. The boys going to go into the locker room KB with a 14 to 10 lead of the Delaware State. I tell you, this kid Chris Andrews, uh, and he, I was impressed the first time I saw him was last week. He just always seems to make uh, big plays when they're needed, and that's what big time players do. Just one heck of a throw in the rain. I mean. Again, you look at the fact had not been uh, throwing the ball extremely well and overthrowing receivers on the outside and missing guys by a half a mile or so. And, you know, when Morgan State needed a play uh, close to the end of the half, this kid puts the ball right on the money in the hands. And, uh, you know, all the only thing the receiver had to do was just catch it, and it was a touchdown. So, again, Morgan State, as you've been saying all, all game stubs, you know, just have to develop that consistency. And, you know, if Morgan State ever – can consistently score the football, you know, in the red zone, then a lot of teams are going to have problems because Morgan State's showing itself as a big play team right now. You know, they can they can score from 30 yards and over. You know, it's inside the 20 that's hampered this team, you know, most of the season. But, you know, again, uh, even on defense, they've given up a lot in terms of the run, and I, I hear the numbers and the stats, but when they needed stops, they made them at those valuable points. And, you know, so overall, I mean, you know, even if you look at the numbers, I don't think it describes describes the character of this Morgan State football team under the leadership of Fred Ferry. Morgan State, Delaware State, going to go to the locker room, fellas, as we have reached intermission. We step aside at the half. Let's go. Morgan State University Bears, 14. Delaware State University Hornets, 10. You're listening to Morgan State University football. June Walton played women's basketball from 1978 to 1981. And Edward Yearwood, track and field student athlete from 1981 to 1984. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> Varsity M Club and Morgan State Athletic Department honored their inaugural first two teams of distinction award winners. Oh, the inaugural CIAA team will be the 1966 Morgan State football team that won the 1966 Tangerine Bowl, led by Hall of Famer Willie Lanier, and the first MEAC team of distinction is the 1974 Morgan State men's basketball team which won the 1974 NCAA College Division National Championship, which was led by Associated Press National Player of the Year and former NBA player Marvin Webster. Let's congratulate all of our honorees. And now for the Morgan State University magnificent Marching Machine.
Ladies and gentlemen, you are all about to witness one of the greatest phenomena of your lifetime. It is the Morgan State University Magnificent Marching Machine. But before they get started, drum maker, please show everyone how you need back. Machine, are you ready? Morgan State University, are you ready? Originally from the city of Baltimore, Maryland, major in civil engineering, Morgan State University. Show some love for drum major, Mr. Darius Gerard Rock. Eleven young ladies have perfected the art form of dancing, music, skill, class, and technique. Thanks to Uptown Funk, featuring Bruno Mars. Put your hands together, make some noise for your Roxy Dancers!
by the National Trust for Historic Preservation as a national treasure. Morgan State University, stand to your feet and make some noise as we prepare to celebrate 150 years of black excellence.
get over the hump growing for the first quarter. The number was 544-966 more. I, uh, I admit, once again, that number was 544-9664. And the second quarter winner was Mike White. And the number was 544-9672. 944 9672. Back at you. Half time. Morgan State University style. Bears on the home front. New Stadium. Earl C. Banks Field. Doing it on this soggy Saturday afternoon against the Hornets of Delaware State. We've reached intermission. First half math looks this way. Total offense. Morgan State 270 yards in total offense. Delaware State 145, Morgan balanced offense, 141 on the ground, 129 by air. Delaware State overwhelmingly on the ground, 129 yards rushing, 19 yards on the ground. Individual statistical breakdown for the Bears, Orlando Johnson. It was hobbling a little bit towards the end of the first half, nine carries, 66 yards as he leads away for the Bears on the ground. Lamont Brown the third, seven carries, 49 yards. Chris Hanzo, the Morgan quarterback, a couple of chokes for 11 yards. Eric Corral, four carries for 10 yards. An up and down first half for the Morgan quarterback, Chris Hanzo. Nine of 19. No interceptions, two touchdown tosses. Those touchdown tosses were Thomas Barton and Amante Poteet. Four catches for Martin in the first half for 54 yards. Amante Poteet, three catches for 22. For Delaware State, Big run by Mike Waters in the first half, a 44-yard run. Set up a score for the Hornets. He has seven carries, 66 yards in the half. Bryson Elaine, 14 carries for 40 yards. Quarterback Daniel Epperson, three of nine, just 19 yards up top. Scoring summary looks this way. Monte Poteet got it open, got the scoring open with a 12-yard touchdown reception from Chris Andrews. That came with 7.38 remaining opening quarter. Morgan had 6 0 league Bears unable to convert the point after. Delaware State would answer with 2 0 Mountain remaining first quarter of play. Mike Waters, a one yard touchdown run. That capped the 13 play, 51 yard drive. Point after was good. Hornets had a 7 6 lead. Hornets would increase the lead early in the second quarter. 12 35 of the second quarter when their place kicker, Wisdom and Zidi, 28 yard field goal, eight play, 60 yard drive, 214 off the clock. Hornets had a 10 to 6 lead. Morgan late in the half, only 24 seconds before intermission. 25 yard touchdown pass. Chris Andrews to Thomas Martin. Morgan goes to the locker room. Calvin Bridges with a 14 to 10 lead, but almost 100 yards in penalties in the first half for Morgan. Nine penalties for 86 yards. Yeah, you know, you just got to get better. You know, uh, sometimes it could be for different reasons. LG, everything is not built upon, you know, a team being undisciplined. Sometimes it's a team being anxious. So that all these things come together, I mean, it still equates to uh, what some would consider just being undisciplined. But you know, you got to really settle your ball club down and uh, really work on, you know, just being, um, just doing your job, doing your job with great technique. And, and uh, you know, doing it the right way. And I think uh, a lot of the penalties that the Bears are getting are things that can be approved upon. A lot of, uh, particularly the holding penalties, when you look at how the kids are holding them, you know, just got to do a better job in techniquing them and, you know, making sure that they're, you know, moving their feet in proper position and doing the things you're supposed to do. You know, a field of penalties are just, you know, look like anxious penalties, especially the false starts and things of that nature. Uh, just knowing the snap count, getting used to, you know, new quarterback and things. But heck, guys, well, this, this is game number four now, uh, you know, during the, during the season. And week five in, uh, in the MEAC college football season, and, you know, these things are really unacceptable at this point. You know, you can imagine how better this team would be. Now, these penalties are not just offensive penalties, even the penalties as well, but how much better this team would be, you know, without those penalties. I mean, it would be a different ball game against Howard last week. It would be a different ball game in this half. And I think the major factor here for the Bears, um, even so the penalties look like it's an overwhelming deficit for the Bears in terms of what we don't do well. 
uh, it's special teams. I think that's the thing, and that's going to be the key to the Bears, you know. We have to improve on the kicking game when we get down the stretch. you got to be able to make extra points. you got to make these field goals. And, you know, and, uh, against teams that, you know, you're going to play it close to, that's going to be the key factor for the Bears. Signs it up for me, Styles. What do the Bears have to do to walk away with the win on this rainy Saturday? Well, uh, as uh, KP said, eliminate uh, some of the penalties and try to avoid those loads that they have. They seem to play well for one quarter, then two quarters they don't play well, then another quarter they play well. Find that consistency. The penalties have something to do with it, but one thing I will give this team credit for. They never seem to really give up, and they believe that they are a good football team. So I think the penalties and all of those things can go away with winning. So if they can finish off this game with 100 yards of penalties in the first half, we'll be a feather in the back half. And right now, the Bears are tied for first place in the MEAC Conference, undefeated. Can't beat that. <laughs> Don't get no better than that. Second half kickoff, fellas, it's in the air. Deep kick under the end, kick fielded in the end zone, going to come out of the end zone. And Bryce in the lane, across the 10, up to about the 14, chopped down right there. At the 14-yard line, game tackled by Morgan Special Teams. First and 10, Hornets, as uh, maybe would have been better advised to take the knee, gave up about 10 yards in field position. Would have had it at the 25 had he decided to take the knee, but they're going to work it at 14. That's where the Hornets will go to work for the first and 10. You take the number one kick return guy in the BI conference versus the number one kick return defense in the conference. That time, Morgan State wins the battle. First and 10 Hornets. They do it from their own 14. First snap of the second half. Rain once again picking up in intensity here at Hughes Stadium. Quarterback is Daniel Epperson. He has twin wides to the near side, sends his full back in motion, awaits the snap from center on first and ten. Gets snapped, tailback gets the call, going to be dropped behind the line of scrimmage. Morgan defense coming up, Morgan pushed around a little bit on the ground in the first half. That time, unable to get much yardage. Bryson Elaine tripped up behind the line of scrimmage. Malachi Washington defensively going to be second down and 11. Let's call it 7 and 12. We're going to call him a loss of two. From the 13-yard line, that's where the Hornets go to work. Epperson is the quarterback. He'll give to the tailback. Short side of the field, again, not much. Dragged down after about a two-yard pickup to about the 15-yard line. Trying to get the edge of the running backs. That time shut off by Brandon Griffin. Morgan outside linebacker. That'll be third down and 10 for the Hornets. So what Delaware State is giving you is a double tight end package. And you know, with the double tight ends on both sides, sort of in a wing type position, really trying to outman and outnumber Morgan State on certain sides of the field. Here we go, third down and 10, near side hash mark. Hornets gonna go to work. Quarterback is that percent. Twin wides, far side, lone back. Bryson Elaine, back to pass, that percent. Left hand will step up. Here bumps, has to tuck and run, gonna be dropped. Behind the line of swimming blue, that's gonna be a sack. Yeah, they stop him and drop him. Behind the line, A.J. Agnelis, the defensive end, coming off the edge. Gets the sack, runs off the field, has a seat on the fence, so that did my job. I'm going to sit down. As uh, they're going to turn it over, it's fourth down for the Hornets. Oh, uh, man, you love it when you see the kids having fun. Indeed. Morgan fourth State, down, defensive play. end, getting the sack. A.J. Agnelis, Hornets going to have to give it up. As on comes the punter, Wisdom and Zeal. As uh, Morgan State going to drop Martinez. back. Thomas Martin to return the NZD boot. Kicks airborne. Martin awaits. Drives him back inside the 50. Ball takes a bounce at about the 45. Still bouncing. Taking big time bounces for the Hornets. Finally stops at the 36 yard line. Good punt and roll by NZD. Morgan State as a result has the ball in their own end. No first touch of the second half. It'll be first and 10 Morgan. They'll have it at their own 36 as we are early in the third quarter. 12-53 remaining. Morgan has the 14 to 10 lead. KB, you talked about the Bears are being tied for first place in the MEAC. Let's take a quick look at the MEAC standings. North Carolina Central Don't forget with the 1-0 MEAC record and a 2-2 overall record. Uh, tickets are only at number one, half and also at number one with a 1-0 record. 1-2 overall. Morgan is 1-2 with a 1-0 record. And Savannah State with a win last week against Bethune at 1-0. And SC State at 1-0 putting up the rear. Florida a and at 0-1, Bethune-Cookman at 0-1, Howard at 0-2, Norfolk State at 0-1, and, and North Carolina a and t and has other scores play. in the MEAC. Morgan State, Bears. Norfolk State. 
Delaware State Hornets. The Bears, the Hornets, Morgan with the 14 to 10 lead. a and did get into MEAC play just a couple of nights ago. They played Hampton on Thursday night. They beat the Pirates to death. Uh, Tariq Cohen had 256 yards on the ground for a and So a and off to the 1-0 start in the MEAC and uh, Hampton now 1-1. It's going to be interesting what Tariq Cohen looks like in the NFL draft this year. You know, he's definitely a guy, I think, um, one of the things I'm so proud of, uh, LG, and we all should be, is what we saw in the Celebration Bowl. Now we have a black college uh, uh, bowl game. Indeed, three going. Only about five, 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 six. But getting it done on the ground. Tailback gets the call. First and ten, Morgan, not much. Back to the line of scrimmage, no further. Corralled by the interior of that defensive front for the Delaware State Hornets. No room to run for Lamont Brown, the third. Tailback for the Bears. Let's give him one. It'll be second down and nine. Bears going to work far side half down from the 37 yard line. Again, LB3 gets the call straight ahead. Two, maybe three yards. Blow shot of the four. Let's give him the 39 yard line. It's going to be third down, so third and six for Morgan Sink. I'll tell you what, Morgan coming in really struggling with the running game coming into this game. Was able to rack up over 100 yards rushing in the first half. Bears looking to convert on third down. It'll be third down, let's call it six. Ball spotted at the 40. Back to pass, Andrews. He'll pump, he'll fire. Far sideline. Get it out there! Oh, the catch. Thomas Martin had a step or two on the second day of the pass. Thrown slightly behind him. Tried to adjust, could not corral it. That would have been six if he had been able to hit him in stride. But it's incomplete. It's fourth down. The Bears have to give it up. I'm telling you right now, Thomas Martin is one of the best receivers I've seen run a double move in this conference in quite some time. You know, he's not the fastest guy. He's just a, he's a great possession receiver. Has really decent speed, but just the double moves. His ability to control his hips and explode that time wide open. Bears have to give it up. Alex Rayer is the punter. His kick is in the air. Lots of elevation. Takes a bounce. Morgan bounce and a left turn out of bounds. At about the 30, it is there. The Delaware State Hornets will have their second position. Second possession of the second half, and the rain really picking up in intensity. You can probably hear the rain drops falling on my window pane. Where is the uh, U.S. Stephen Russell Pants Field? Is that a game here tonight? <laughs> oh, it's not pretty on this Saturday afternoon. As this one rain basically the whole ball game. Oh, let's have a rock. First 10, 30. Tailback gets the call. Don't stay the head across the 30. That's about the 30. Though. That's going to be three yards on the pickup. It'll be second down and seven for Delaware. I'll tell you what, KB, you talk about Thomas Martin. He had a great spring game. He had three long touchdowns. Touchdown time number 25. Five open each time. You talk about that double move. He, he had that double move in the groove that day. <laughs> He's getting it back in the groove. Second second great down route down. runner, no doubt. Second down and seven. Tailback gets the call. Goes straight ahead, looking for room, not much, maybe about two yards, out to about the 35-yard line. Tiptoes for for just a couple of yards. Is Mike Waters. It'll be third down for the Hornets. Call 35. They have it at their own 35. Stop by number seven, Damari Whitaker. Damari Whitaker, the Morgan linebacker. Third down, five. Putting the brakes on the ball carry. At their 35 yard line. Four wides in the set. They have trips to the far side. Single wide to the near. Mike Waters is the long running back. Your quarterback is the junior, Daniel Epperson. From the near side, Hash, Dell State Hornets looking to convert on third down and five. From their own 35, Epperson loads the pistol, awaits the snap and center. Just get snapped. Epperson in the pocket. He'll look the throw. Here comes pressure. Escapes the heat. Run the run. Up to the 40. Epperson slides down at the 45-yard line. 15 yards on the pickup. That'll be enough for Hornet first and 10. Yeah, just the heady play that time, you know. You're not going to have a whole lot of time to find a receiver in this type of weather. When he doesn't see it, he tucks it, gets, uh, and, and get what he can get. That time, the first down. They said half mark. Hornets go back to work. Mike Waters gets the call. Carries a defender or two for a yard or two. Does Mike Waters before he's finally corralled by the Morgan inside linebacker. Mike gets it. He's getting five yards on the field. Maybe six. It'll be second down and four. Again, it's Greg Gibson on the tackle. About a two-yard, maybe three-yard pickup by Mike Waters. Again, it was Waters on the carry. Gibson on the tackle. It'll be third down and two. 
Hornets going to go with Adam Hunt. Trying to convert a third and two in Morgan territory from the 48. Three wide receivers all split far side. Got a single wide to the near. Lone back is Waters. Quarterback is Epperson. Hornets looking to convert a third down. They do it from the near side. Has more. Epperson awaits the snap. He'll get the snap. The give to Waters. Steady hit he goes. I don't think he got there. Needed about two yards, and for the third consecutive time, Greg Gibson makes the tackle. Waters. Got a little help from Bedrick Jones. Stop shot of the first down. It'll be first down for the Hornets, and apparently going to punch on the Hornets punch. Delaware State. Greg Gibson, such a great downhill linebacker. Just, you know, uses his eyes effectively that time. Great penetration by the linebacker. Able to find the ball in the backfield and, and stop him for the Delaware first down. State, number 32. Fidel Martinez, Martinez is on to do the punting for the Hornets. The Martinez boot is airborne. Short kick in front of Thomas Martin. Takes a Morgan bounce at the 20. And another Delaware State bounce in the Morgan bounce. For a little zigzag in the football. Finally down at the 22-yard line. That's where the Morgan offense will go to work. Their second touch of the second half. It comes with 8.40 remaining in the third quarter. Morgan State, Delaware State, the Bear, the Hornets. Morgan looking to remain unbeaten. In the MEAC, 1-0 off to a 1-0 start over Howard University. Howard continuing to have a tough time. Morgan They're on the road at Norfolk just State tap away. this afternoon, and they trail Norfolk State 21-12, eight minutes remaining of the Morgan State in the Bears. second quarter. Catch breaking news Howard the Bears. has to come back the if they want to avoid an 0-5 start for the more. 2016 season. Download and enjoy. I'll tell you, Norfolk State plays some pretty decent football throughout the season, and the record doesn't necessarily talk about how well I thought they played Richmond, particularly in the first half of that ball game. That's the number two football team in the country in the championship subdivision. And, you know, I think Latrell Scott's doing a fine job down there with recruiting and, uh, you know, being able to put together and develop that football program. Indeed. As uh, they're going at it, Spartan man this afternoon. Spartans coming off a loss last week to North Carolina Central. They're looking to bounce back with a MEAC win over Howard. Morgan State. Orange and Blue, they got to work with the first and 10. It's a 14 to 10 Morgan lead. Scoreboard says 840, remaining in the third. Your Bay is going to go far side hash. Quarterback is Chris Andrews. Twin wide to their side. Single wide to the far. Andrews going to load the pistol. Andrews has one man in the backfield, gets a snap, going to run the option. He chooses to keep it, goes straight ahead only about a yard. As Chris Andrews on the read option, tried to go right up the back, not much. Let's give him, let's give him maybe a happy yard. It'll be second and essentially 10 for MSU. Chris Martin does have some running skills. Uh, three big running plays at the, in the Shot fourth number quarter. 52, the Howard Lawrence. University game no helped gain on the play. seal a victory for more than a week ago. For Morgan State. Second down, Bears need 10. Chris Andrews line. has that offense set. He'll send twin wide far side. Gets snapped from center. The give to Eric Correll. Eric Correll loses the rock. Let's see. The Morgan State tailback, Eric Correll, nowhere to go. And uh, able to reclaim possession Eric of the football, but nowhere to go for Eric Correll. Scored the game-winning touchdown last week against Howard University, but this time nowhere to go. He'll lose about two or three yards. It'll be third and 14 for the Bears. The four on the play. Morgan so will do it far down. side hash mark. Fourth from the 17 yard line. Morgan they got three six. wides in the set. Single six. wide, six. far side, double wides to the near. Tight end in the slot, far side. Back to pass, Andrews in the pocket, time. Fires far side line, overshoots the target. As that time, Thomas Martin never Andrew really turned to look for the blue. ball. He Tennis was locked up one on one with Thomas Jordan Martin. Hanna, uh, the freshman corner on the far side. Incompletion on the play. But we got a pause in the cause. Looks like we hit, may have a marker down. Clock stops with 7.27 remaining. And if this one is against Morgan, Dallas yeah. State will decline, and Morgan State will have to give it up as it is fourth down. And indeed, the Hornets do decline the penalty. That's one way for Morgan to avoid penalties when the other team so declines. So Morgan, Morgan State won't be penalized this time. But they'll have to give it up as it's fourth down. Thank the Lord. We can't take another one, LG. 86 first half, 86 penalties yardage in the first half of the Bears. Got to do something to turn that Returning around as for the Delaware season State, moves number forward. 18, Mason Rutherford. Nathan Rutherford to return. The Alex Ray boot is airborne. Penalty flag flies. May have running into a roughing the kicker. Meanwhile, the ball taking a big time 
Delaware State bounce. Morgan downs it at about the 41. But Alex Ray of the Morgan punter was hit. If it's running into, still won't be a first down. If it's roughing, it will be a first down. So let's see if they make it a personal foul call or if they make it a roughing call. Just a judgment call on the uh, eye of the official. But Alex Ray had definitely run into, definitely roughed. But which way will they go with the penalty call will decide if Morgan will keep possession of the football. Well, Ray did a great job in <clears throat> making it look a little bit more than what it was. He, he did that, LG, like a fine arts major. Well, Concentration in drama. You, you got to be an Academy Award candidate to be a, a kicker. <laughs> comes with the job description. And uh, he did the Reggie uh, Reggie Miller flop on that one. <laughs> that was Vladi <Lottie> Diva. <laughs> and the officials are discussing with the Morgan sideline, uh, the referee, is to uh, make the uh, determination as to whether or not Morgan is going to uh, accept or decline and also explaining uh, the nature of the penalty. Justin Elliott is the referee. He's about to make the call. And it's going to be running into, not roughing. So it's a five-yard penalty. It will not be a first down because it was a fourth down. Morgan still needed 14 for a first down. So the five-yard penalty means Morgan has the option of uh, accepting it and kicking it again, and they're going to do that. It will not be a first down, though, as they will running into rather than roughing. So from the 22-yard line, Alex Rea will try it again. Mason Rutherford is the man back in lone safety. He'll look to return for the Delaware State Hornets. The rare boot, it's airborne. Rutherford awaits, driven back inside of his 35. Takes a bounce inside the 30, still bouncing at the 20. Rutherford picks it up, heads up forward, out of bounds at about the 25-yard line. That's where the Delaware State Hornets look to go to work with a first and 10 with 7.05 remaining quarter number three. I'll tell you, Alex Rea has had a tough, uh, tough year running the football so far for Morgan, but that was an outstanding kick and had to travel at least about 60 yards. So the, the thing about this kid, Ray, I really like is that he, he right now he's going to develop into a stronger punter as he gets stronger, but he has the height. I like the way he kicks the ball. He allows the coverage, you know, to really get there and be in the place. Uh, he's been doing it all season long, but, you know, Rutherford, uh, the other kid uh, for Dell State, he has this thing that he does, and I, I think it's really deceiving whether, you know, he's saying move away from the ball or whether he's calling fair catch. And I think it's really confusing the Morgan it players. So it is. But he's a fair catch this time. So his gain up to the 25 is wiped off from getting a fair catch. That makes that a 59-yard punt for Alex Ray. First and 10, Dell State. Hornets going to do it from the 19-yard line. Trips to the far side. Got a single wide to the net. Quarterback is a junior. Daniel Epperson is the Delaware State QB. Oh, wait, snap in the pocket. Epperson on the quarterback draw. Straight ahead. Up to the 20, corralled and dropped at the 21-yard line. That's A.J. Agbelese, the Morgan State defensive end Daniel on the stop Epperson. and the drop. No game on the play. It'll be second down and 10. And Morgan State defense starting to find some Daniel answers to that Delaware play. State running game. Their side has Hornets go to work. Trips far side, single wide to the knee. Bryson Lane gets the call. A tailback, not much room. He's wrapped up by Damari Whitaker, inside linebacker on the case. About a yard pickup for a lane. Going to be third down and nine for the Hornets. In the first half, Delaware State will get a lot of second and short, third and shorts. Now Morgan doing a much better job. Because they cannot run against the left side of this Morgan State defense. They've been having all their success versus the right side of the Morgan State defense. And it's Dave Hope, up us in the front. He'll fire, crossing pattern. Got a man, Mason Rutherford, but he's wrapped up shy of the first down. As Demar yeah, Whitaker makes the catch, the pass to 25 and about the 27. It'll be fourth and two. And boy, I'm going to be looking for it here for Dell State. Boy, you'll give a big time field position if you don't convert. But not seeing the play unit come on. So they're going to go for it. And for the run, yeah, late they decided, okay, maybe the right. Maybe we need a right. Maybe we need a punt. So they're going to give it up. It'll be Delaware State bringing on their punting unit. Yeah, because I really want to give Coach a little bit more credit <laughs> than going for it right here early in the second half in a, in a four-point ball game. Fidel well, Martinez is the punter. He's on to give it up for the Delaware State, State Hornets. Thomas Martin Martinez is back. Returning to the Bears. State. Good snap. Martinez, boot. It's here. Thomas Martin. Thomas Martin takes a bounce from Martin at about the 40. 
and they'll be down right there at the 40 yard line. That's where the Morgan offense will go to work. We have 513 remaining. We are in quarter number three. That's KB. I'm LG. Got Bernard Stubbs keeping us company as well. Triumphant here on the Morgan State University campus as we are in quarter number three. Only points in this second half. Morgan State has a 14 to 10 lead. Morgan State seeing if they can get a little bit more cushion. Want to get a little bit, little bit more elbow room, fellas. Trying to get a little bit of spread here, see if they can do something offensively on this possession. Still a lot of time left in the ball game. We're only looking to move the two in O in the middle of the game. A tough test in the Delaware State. Yeah, got a tough test in the first half. Uh, Delaware State pushing the bears all around the field with the running game, but Bears seem to have made some adjustments here uh, at halftime and have been successful in these first couple of Delaware State drives as they hold on to that 14 to 10 lead. 5-13 left to play in the third quarter. You know, I think this is a big series, uh, guys, for the Bears. And uh, the reason why is that, you know, I keep hearing the term, you know, consistency over and over again. And, you know, regardless of how the Bears score, whether it's three points, whatever the case may be, I just think it's important because we see a team with the capability and the talent to really move the ball against anyone. You know? and, because, I mean, part of it is having a great leadership and a, and a, and a veteran quarterback. But, you know, I, I think this is a huge place right now because in this type of ball game, who can really get a lead and stretch a lead. It's tough to come back in this type of weather. Back to pass, Chris Andrews down the same. We're gonna have an incomplete, no, we're gonna have a penalty play. And a complete pass. I believe Thomas Martin held on to it. He was running the same route. The pass was complete, there was contact. I think we got a pass interference call against Dell State, but nonetheless a catch by Thomas Martin of some 15 yards. Either way, it looks like a first and 10 for Morgan State. KB, you talked about Fred Litnikoff early in the game. That looked like he may have some stick him on. That ball just would not go away, but Thomas Martin with a great effort and apparently a first down and 10 catch for MSU. I don't know how he caught that football with the defender hanging on one arm. Far side hats. Bears go to work, first and 10. They have it at the Dell State 46. Wait a minute, movement prior to the snap. I think this will be against the Bears. Left side of the offensive line, I think the tight end, Willie Gillis, left tackle, Josh Miles. Both of them may have moved a little prematurely. Bears going to have to back up five. I tell you what they used to tell me. If you don't know the snap count, wait till the ball is snapped. Just don't, don't go on sound, don't go on anything. Wait till the ball is snapped, then you jump. That's how you can eliminate that problem. Their penalty problems continue to mount. It'll be first and 15. Quick flip in the flats. Ladoria Spearman breaks a tackle. No sideline 40. Spearman out of bounds at about the 35-yard line. Ladoria quiet in the first half. Makes his first snatch here in the second half. They're going to move the sticks. That's a first and 10 for the Orange and Blue. I'll tell you something about this kid. If there's a stat in the MEAC for yards after catch, this guy would be the one. He makes special plays. But back to what you were saying about back in the day when the coaches so said when you don't know the snap count, Morgan you can't be in the game. Quick <laughs> 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 pass on the flats to Ricky Fiss. Makes the catch at about the 32. Short game, though. Andrews Only about three-yard gain on the pass Ricky completion. Andrews the Fiss is going to spot it at the 30. Let's get him five yards on the pickup. It'll be second and five for the Bears. Ball spotted at the Dell State 30. we got 4-13 remaining. We're in the third. Morgan nursing a 14 to 10 lead. Morgan on the march, right to left. Dell State Hornets digging on D. Morgan does work on O. Chris Sanchez, the quarterback, in the pocket. The graduate student airs it out. End zone. The rookie fist. Make no incomplete pass. He was there. It was there, but the ball just off his fingertips. Rookie fist could not hold in. Had him open. Incompletion brings about a third and five. Morgan scrimmage remains the third. Remember I told you about the body language of Chris Andrews. He threw a nice strike there, but the ball just missed out of a stretch um, I just think he's a great long ball thrower, man. He, he really throws that ball with great timing and great imagination. No side has. Bears looking to convert a third and five. They do it at the Dallas State third. Chris Andrews. Has twin rides far side on the option. He'll keep it looking for first down yards. Breaks a tackle inside the 25, down to the 20. Nine yards on the pickup for the Morgan quarterback, Chris Andrews. Kept it on the road option. Hangs it up for a first and 10. Morgan has it at the Dell State 20. Again, you know, 
Big time quarterbacks make big time plays when it's necessary. Said it was a huge drive inside the 20. Let's see if we can get past the red zone woes. Tailback gets a call. It's Eric Corral fights his way forward. Not a lot of running room. Picked and clawed his way for about two yards. Finally wrapped up at about the 18 yard line. Stop and drop by Delaware State's linebacker, Brian Cavaconti. Good looking freshman inside backer for the Hornets. It'll be second down and eight for the Bears. They do it from the Bears State 18. Bears go to work without a huddle, they go three wide. Your quarterback is Andrews. Chris off the play fake. Fires down the seam. Dropped by the intended target. Threw it with a whole lot of velocity. That was definitely a Nolan Ryan fastball. He threw that time. Ricky Fuss just couldn't hang on to it. That's an incompletion. It'll be a third down and 10 for the Bears. Morgan State. I don't like Morgan throwing the ball under the horse instead of the outside. Outside close. Had a man open, couldn't hang on to the football. Yeah, and I tell you, most of the Morgan receivers are not wearing the gloves. And when the gloves get wet, they're supposed to tactify. Means it's a little bit more sticky, but the Bears are going barehanded. Third and nine. Quarterback gives to Eric Carell. Uh-uh. Right up the middle. Eric Carell nowhere to go. He just went right up the eight gap on third and long. And the Hornets are right now. No running game for Eric Corral. Only about two <laughs> yards on the pickup. It'll be fourth down for Morgan. And looks like they're going to bring on Alex Rea to attempt a field goal. As uh, Alex Rea earlier in the game had a field goal effort blocked. Looking to see if he can make this one true. It will be spotted at the 25. And then with the football field, it will be a 35 yard effort. It will come out of the Chris Black hold. It would extend this Morgan's 13 to 10 lead. Snap, spot. Kick, 35-yard effort for Alex Rea. Alex Rea splits the uprights. Bears are back on the ball. Score counts. Two fifty remaining. Quarter number three. Morgan increases to the seventeen to ten lead over Delaware State. That, that was a huge. That was a huge series for the Bears. Um, stretches the game out to a seven-point ball game. Delaware State now has the score. You know, even though there's time left in the third quarter, I thought, you know, uh, scoring, you know, was important for the Bears. And, and that third down play, folks would say, well, heck, why don't you throw the ball down the field? I think Coach wanted to make a, a high percentage call, which he did, knock out two birds with one stone, stone first one, uh, run a high percentage play, but more and secondly, uh, to if we don't get the first down, let's put the football where my kicker Ray likes to kick the ball from. He's one of those kids that likes it in the middle of the football field. The coach made sure he had the football. I think it's a great confidence builder for Ray, who had a kick blocked earlier in this game, and he's nasty by the coach. Alex Ray going to tee it up. Morgan State Jr. plays kicker. He is about to give it up. Back in dual safety to return for the Hornets of Delaware State. Bryson Elaine, Teron Selby. As the kickoff by Rhea, it's in the air. Nine drive, end over, end over. Going to be fielded by Elaine at the goal line. Here he comes, out to the 10. Elaine at the 15, spurred at about the 16-yard line. That is where the Delaware State Hornets will go to work with a first and 10. Dell State, Morgan State, the Bears against the Hornets, 17-10 is the lead. Hornets looking to see if they can answer. They have it 85 yards away from pay dirt at their own 15. I mean, this kid, Rhea, seems to kick the ball, the ball better <laughs> in this tough weather, you know. How about that? He's had a tough season, an uneven season. A place kicker and punter for the Bears is Alex Rhea. But nailed it from 35 yards out in the rain to extend the Morgan lead to 17-10. to 10. First and 10, Dell State. Up for some the quarterback. Good give to Mike Waters. Waters knocked off his feet behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard or two. Morgan defense standing tall at that time. Ain't giving up no ground on that play. Not down for no game. Mike Waters actually the ball carry. To Rod Roberts on the tackle. It'll be second down and 11. Far side has gone. But it's going to work. Daniel Orperson will give to Waters. Waters breaks a tackle or two for a yard or two. Breaks another across the 15. Out. For about the 19, maybe 20 yard line. It's going to be four five tough yards up the middle for Mike Waters. It'll be third down and six for the Hornets. Stop by Bear number 31. Tightening the screws. Tightening the screws. It's third the, uh, down. Delaware State running game and here so six. far in the second half. For the Hornets. Third down. Hornets need six. Hornets, Hornets do a far side line. has. They're going to go pistol. They go one wide far. 20 yards near side. 
Bears dig in. They show a three front on defense as Morgan looking to turn them away on third and six. Daniel Epperson, the quarterback, has that offense set. He'll load the pistol. Sends one man in motion as he awaits the snap. Gets snapped. Short drop. Epperson the throw. In the pocket. Here it comes. It's going to collapse on him. He is dropped. He's dropped from the outside. Malachi Washington, the first man to the quarterback. First him up in the pocket. He was gathered and dropped at about the 17-yard line. It'll be fourth down. Probably a punting situation for the Hills. Everson appeared to have some time to throw the ball initially, but coming from the middle, fourth down for the Hills. If the Bears are forced to fourth down, fourth down and nine. The Bears to punt. For Delaware, the Bears to punt. 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 The Bears First and ten, Orange and Blue Red. 25 seconds remaining in the third. Morgan with the football. Morgan with the 17 to 10 lead. Yeah, and I'll tell you again, another, I think, uh, big series for the Bears. Uh, because, again, now we can make this a two-score game for Delaware State. And so you want to at least get you another three on the board if you can. Pitch to the tailback. No room to run for Lamont Brown the third. LB3 shut down. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Rashawn Barrett, Singh from Jersey. Knocks him down, takes him down. Two yard loss. Let's call it a three yard loss. Back to the 45. Loss of three on and 13. Second and 13 for the day. I tell you, talking about Alex Rayer. He's improved his kicking average by three yards. Coming in at 45 yards. Step aside. Take a time out at the end of three quarters of play. Your score. Morgan State University Bears 17. Delaware State Hornets 10. You're listening to Morgan State University Football. <laughs> up yeah I'm ready to go Andrew's pass was complete yeah I think so Ricky Fish 
gain of five on the play. So it's fourth down and two for Morgan State at the Hornets 35 yard line. Welcome back. Morgan State going to go for it as we're underway here in the fourth quarter on fourth down and three. Wait a minute. Bears going to get a timeout. They came out on fourth down looking like they were going to go, but then running the play clock. Coach Fred T. Fire decides he wants to talk about it. So the Bears will commiserate as to whether or not they're going to go on fourth. Uh, let's call it fourth and about three. They have it at the Dallas State 35 yard line. Just in the way, the final quarter of play. Morgan State, Delaware State, the lead for the Bears is 17 to 10. Yeah, and, uh, you know, you know that consistency that, that we're talking about is something that you build to. And I think in the second half of the ball game, today. we've been seeing it for the Bears. You know, I mean, less number of penalties we've seen thus far. We've seen the Bears sustain a drive, you know, and score at the end of the drive. And, you know, if you continue to score, it's not always going to be touchdowns. Obviously, your red zone percentage is going to increase, but also does your confidence. You can see just from the consistency now that even your quarterback, Chris Andrews, is throwing a good ball on the outside right now. I think the Bears are running the football fairly well. And, uh, you know, that's the consistency that you look for in your offense. And right now, the Bears are showing. I think uh, part of it has to do with the success of the Morgan State running game. Coming into the game, the Bears, as a team, only rushing for uh, slightly over 350 yards. And so far in this game, the Bears over 150 yards rushing. So that's a big bright sign. Uh, I'm sure, Coach Fred Curry is happy to finally see this running game stuff coming forward. On fourth down, fellas, the Bears indeed are going to go for it. Morgan Stark with the pitch to the tailback on the option, looking for first down yards as LB3 has enough. I think the move of the sticks. Yes, indeed. First and ten. Morgan on the option. Wide side of the field. LB3 gets it up. The Bears with a first and ten. They have it at the Delaware State 31. Chris Andrews made that play happen by being aggressive uh, in the option and attacking the, uh, the outside defender, drawing him and pitching the football. Made that play happen. Yes, that has to. Bears go to work. Left to right. They're on the move. Tailback. LB3 gets the call. Inside the 30. Tripped up at about the 27. About a three, maybe four-yard pickup from the Mount Brown the third. Going to mark it at the 27-yard line. It'll be second down and seven for MSU. Mark Brown the third, by far having his best game of the season before that carry, coming in with 53 yards rushing on the game. Bears go to work middle of the field. They had a second down. It's called second and seven for MSU from the 28-yard line of Delaware State. Chris Andrews, the quarterback, play fake. Flip in the flats. That's a Montel Petit. That's one by Miss 25. Down to the 20 yard line. Think he has a first down. Gordon Little Mill in the middle of the field by Petit. Enough to get the Bulls a first and 10. Indeed, they're going to move the sticks. First and 10, Morgan State. They have it at the Delaware State Hornet 19. It's a great individual effort that time. A little dump pass to the outside. The receivers one on one with the defensive back. Able to break the tackle and get up the field for the first down. Bears going there side has. Quarterback gets to the tailback right up the gut, right for the old gap, only about a yard or two. Not much up the middle for Lamont Brown the third. That's giving him about two yards. It'll be second and eight for the Bears. We talked about the Bears' ability to move the football against just about anybody. They actually moved it against Marshall in the early goings. They moved against Holy Cross in the opening game. They also nine. moved the ball against Howard University and they start to move the football down against Dell State. Second down and eight. Bears do it near side has mark. LB3 will not be on the field. Tripped up at about the 15, but there is a marker down. Hold everything. At the 12.06 mark of the fourth and final quarter, LB3 by one tackle to break. It may have broke that one to the house, but maybe all for not. Looks like this one's coming back. Looks like there's a hold against Morgan State. And I, I really like that inside zone play because it gives the running back the range from tackle to tackle, you know, sort of to pick and choose his hole. And, you know, and when defense is over pursue and you get that cut back to the opposite side of the opposite side of the tackle, it's just such a beautiful play. Morgan State now over 100 yards in penalties. They are averaging 100 yards plus in another weekend with over 100 yards and penalties. 10 yards step up as a result of the hold. It'll be second down and 20 for the Bears. They have it at the 28-yard line. 
of the Dallas State Hawks. Quarterback Chris Andrews, turn wide set, short drop, he'll look right, fires near sideline. That man makes the catch at about the 22 yard line. Nice reception, kind of a tight rope by Andrew Thomas Martin to ride the sideline. 10 yard pickup for Morgan. It'll be third down and 10 for the Bears from the 21. You talk about Thomas Stop Martin being a great route runner. I'm impressed Gary with Bell his hands Jr. today in this wet weather. He's made a couple of nice catches. So it's third Bears down better work no side has. It's third and one. Let's call third and a dirty dozen. Third and 12 for Morgan. They do it from the 121. Twin wides, double tights for the Bears. Quarterback Andrews will look to throw. Left hander will fire, overshoots the target, a little behind Ricky Fist as well. Could not corral it at about the 12 yard line. That will bring about a fourth down and maybe another field goal attempt here by Morgan with 11 20 remaining in the ball game. See, it doesn't matter as much if you score the football. If you're scoring the football, then, you know, you're not overshadowed by penalties because even if you are averaging them more than anyone else in the league, if you are scoring on your drives, attempt. it doesn't mean as much. This will be a 28-yard attempt. It will come out of the first back hold. will come no side hands. Snap, spot, kick, and As he's two for three this afternoon. On third round, efforts missed his first try, has made his next Exactly where you want to be. Hey, they say it never rains in Southern California, but I can't tell because this kid kicks the heck out of the football in the rain. And, you know, hey, I told you and in coming into the half that I thought special teams would play a huge role in the second half of this ball game. And, and this kid uh, has really stepped his game up, you know, playing with a lot more confidence right now. Looks like his leg is getting stronger as this game gets wetter. But uh, rare, huge right now in the second half for the Bears. 20 to 10, Morgan now doubling down on uh, Delaware State, but the Hornets still got some time. Time this bad boy around. Game not over just yet by a long shot. 11-17 remains on the fourth quarter scoreboard clock. Ramon Germany with the knee, got Calvin Goodrich. That Ramon Stone's got a rainy Saturday afternoon in progress. Morgan looking to go 2 0 and be at conference play next weekend. They're going to be down in Georgia. We'll have that one for you right here on Morgan State University Radio. They will be in Savannah, Georgia. The Savannah Tigers surprise winners over the Boone-Pippen University last week. This week, Savannah State on the road in Tallahassee tonight. They look to tame the Rattlers of Florida AM and next weekend. Morgan State and Savannah State. Morgan hoping to continue their march in the MEAC. Game at a time, a snap at a time. Right now, trying to see if they can deal with Delaware State. 20 to 10 is the Morgan margin as Alex Ray, the Morgan place kicker, about to tee it up and give it up with 11-17 remaining in the ball. And if you're Delaware State, the problem here is you've only passed the ball for 26 yards in this game. You've had success in the first half, rushing the football. The Bears have clamped down on the running game with 11 minutes and 17 seconds left. Delaware State's going to have to find their game right now. And I suggest for the Bears to not to get cute right now. Keep the ball away from number six for Delaware State. He still is one of the most dangerous kids in this conference. Deep end over end kick. Number six has the rock. That's Bryce in the lane. Lottery along the 15, turns the corner at the 20. Near sideline, 25. Bryce in the lane tripped up at about the 28. That is where the Delaware State offense will go to work. It'll be first and 10 Hornets at Delaware State. They do it. Trying to bounce back from a 10 point, 20 to 10 Morgan State lead. That number six you're talking about, averaging over 140 yards a game in all purpose yardage. That was a nice return that time. Yeah. Line. It'll be first and 10 from the 27 yard line. Daniel Epperson is the quarterback. Hornets going to go up near side hash, looking to get that, that offense back in gear. Had some success running the football. First half, Bears have done a better job of corralling the ground game here in the second half. First and 10, but before the snap, got whistles, got movement. We got something happening. We got a timeout. Delaware State wants to talk about it. Coach Carter in the, in the crew want to have a chit chat with 11.09 remaining in the ball game. Morgan State, Delaware State gives us a chance to take a peek at the MEAC scoreboard. Only one other game in progress as we speak. That's Norfolk State on the home front for taking on Howard. 
Spartans have the 21 to 12 lead. That game is at intermission. But later on today, top of the hour, four o'clock kickoff in Daytona Beach. North Carolina Central hanging out on the beach this afternoon, taking on the Wildcats of the field. Uh, between 0-1 in the MEAC, North Carolina Central, a win over Norfolk State. They are 1-0 in the conference play. As mentioned, Savannah State, 1-0 in the MEAC. They're taking on a struggling Florida hand and team. The Rattlers still looking for a win. They are 0-4 on the season. They are 0-1 in conference. They are home today against Savannah State. That's a nighttime kickoff. And earlier in the week on Thursday night, North Carolina a and Beat the heck out of Hampton. 31 to 9 was the final count to Rick Cohen. 256 yards, three second half touchdowns as the, uh, the uh, North Carolina AT Adams get off the snide in the MEAC to 1 0. The preseason choice to win the MEAC, North Carolina AT. First and 10, Dell State. They do it near side hash mark. They do it from doing 26 yard line. Off the timeout, they're going to go pistol. Three wide receiver set. Daniel Epperson is the quarterback. Gets snapped to center. Epperson takes the handoff, throws down the middle of the field. It is incomplete. We're looking for the tight end. It's covered by uh, Morgan State safety. Pass a little too tall behind the intended target. It'll be second down and 10. That was a great look that time. Morgan State back in first and 10 and cover zero. That time the big old tight end able to get behind the uh, strong safety and it could have been off to the races had he caught that football. He got his hands on that ball. He was gone. Now, Zara Williams, the tight end, had an opportunity there, but the pass does fall incomplete. It'll be second down and 10. Hornets going to do it near side of hash mark. They go three wide receiver set. Quarterback Epperson in the pocket. Deep drop sets up the screen, but it's incomplete. Was looking for Bryson Elaine on the screen. Appeared to be decently set up, but couldn't complete the toss to the to the running back on the screen play. Incomplete pass for the Delaware State Hornets. That brings about a third down and 10. Now we were talking about consistency all day, but you also want balance. And if you're Morgan right now, you're liking the balance you're getting out of offense. 151 yards, first in the football, and 185 yards for the pass in the football. You got to like that balance. Back to pass, Epperson. Look at the hole, convert a third and 10. He'll fire. Back shoulder. Al Scott doubles, makes the catch across the 45 and about the 47. He's getting tackled. Good back shoulder throw by the quarterback, Daniel Epperson. There is a marker down. We'll check out the flag with 10.52 remaining. Okay. Looks like this is offensive pass interference. It was clear. They're gonna get Al Scott for the push off. The big talented wide receiver, he goes 6'2", he's about 220. The senior from Harrisburg, gonna be flagged for offensive pass interference. Yeah, it was a great back shoulder throw by the quarterback and really didn't necessarily have to push off, but just got caught. And that was right there in the front of the uh, Morgan's bench and one of the coaches ran screaming up at the officials to make the call. He's made the call. So it's going to be a third down and a long 25 for Dell State. Hornets have it at their own 13 yard line. They go three wide on third and third four hundred. As the quarterback Daniel Upson is going to load the pistol. Bryce in the lane is alone back behind him. He'll go in motion to the far side. Quarterback awaits the snap from center. Gets snapped. Has some time. Epperson will roll to his left. Still looking. He'll flip it on the fly. Undershoots Eris Scott as uh, Trey Revelle, the Morgan defensive back in coverage for MSU. It'll be fourth down. It'll be a punting situation fourth for the Hornets. Epperson doing Hornets. a good job that time of escaping the Morgan State. Russ getting pressure from the inside. Bears doing a good job shutting down the Dell State Hornets on that drive. As I said, Dell State coming in to this. 10, 28 left to play in the fourth, only 26 yards in reception so far. Thomas Martin has been returning punts all afternoon long, but the Bears changed punt returners. Now William King is doing his thing as the punt returner for the Bears as Fidel Martinez is back to boot it away for the Hornets. Martinez, boot, boot, boot. William King away to let it bounce. Takes a bounce, big time bounce inside the 40 and finally takes a left turn out of bounds. Inside the 40 at about the 39. That's where the Morgan offense will go to work. It'll be first and 10, MSU. They have it at their own 39 with 10 19 remaining. We're in the fourth and final. Morgan looking for back to back wins. They're looking to go 2 and 2 overall, Stubbs. Looking to go 2 and 0 in the meal. Well, if you're Morgan, you're exactly where you want to be at this point in the season. The first two games of the season, you'd like to one more against Holy Cross Marshall. Not likely. 
this game. The winning so far, they're are. winning. They won the three, game against Howard seven, last three, Saturday. So nine, you're more than two and zero start. You can't ask for Once more again, as you start the act in 2016. The star from Germany got Bridges also with us on this Saturday afternoon. Been running off and on, sometimes extremely hard throughout the course of the afternoon. They're going to try to see what they can do about finding their way to victory on this soggy Saturday. It'll be first and 10 Morgan. Ball going to be spotted at the 40. The officials keeping the towels uh, on the field as they try to keep the football dry snap after snap. Throws it on the near side has mark as the orange the and the blue five, have it four, four, at their nine, own 40 nine, yard line. Nine, Quarterback nine, Chris nine. Andrews, 10 wides in the set. They look to throw. Low snap, he handles it. Here comes pressure off the edge. He's going to be jumped. Backside didn't see it coming. Got stopped and dropped. Rashard Barrett, the senior backer, came backside off the edge. And Chris Andrews never saw him coming. Blindside sack that time for the Hornets. Seven yards on the loss. It'll be second down, 17 for the ball. Bobble snap initially allowed the uh, Dell State defender to catch up to Chris Andrews as the Bears face a second down and 16. Quarterback going to load the pistol. Low snap once again. Picked up by the running back. Lamont Brown the third. He surges forward. Back to the end of the line of scrimmage. Back to about the 40. It'll be third down and 10. So back to back. Low snaps by the Morgan Center. Parker Cooper. And uh, as a result of that one, though, a low thinking by LB3. Scooped it up. So the Morgan didn't lose anything on that one. Picked up some yards, as a matter of fact. But he played down in 10. Bears have had some problems with fumble snaps uh, so far this season in the Holy Cross game. A fumble snap into the end zone ended up in the safety. Right now, you don't want to fumble the ball on this end of the football. Third and long with the orange and the blue. Andrews to throw. Near sideline. Has Thomas Mark. Makes a catch at 45. Stick arms and lead of bounds. Close to first down yardage. Let's see if Thomas Martin got enough to move the sticks. Neck and eye would appear that he does, and indeed he does. That's first and ten. MSU has a good to the yard. Yeah, and Martin uh, a little gimpy that time, but just making some tremendous catches. Stretching his body out. And these are fing these are fingertip and hand catches. These are not body catches. Great, great job by that kid. 11 yard reception for Thomas Martin, first and ten, Morgan State. Good snap from through this time again to LB3. Cuts it across the brain inside the 50, down to about the 47. That's three yard pickup before he stopped and dropped by Rashawn. Ball inside back for the Hornets. It'll be third down and seven for the Bears. LB3 working on his first possible 100 yard effort of the afternoon. He's already over 60 yards rushing in this game. Morgan on the move left to right. They have it at the Hornet 47, facing a second down and seven. 8-12 remaining in the ball game. Morgan sitting on a 20 to 10 lead. Your quarterback is Chris Andrews. Andrews again gives to LB3. Goes right up the gut. Carries defenders to about the 43 yard line. We'll give him four. He'll be shy of the first down. It'll be third down and two for MSU. You know, your options open so much in these situations. And right now it looks like the uh, bear offensive front are just dominating the defensive front of Delaware State. Right now, Morgan State in your third and shorts. Now, you just open up your playbook. Third and short. Dallas State digs in on D. They go three front defensively. From the pistol, they get it to Lamont Brown. Great penetration by that front three for Delaware State. Nowhere to go for Lamont Brown the third. He got back to the line of scrimmage. That's about it. They had actually lost about a half a yard. It'll be fourth down for Morgan. And they bring on the punter. They bring on Alex Ray. I, I think this works in Alex Reyes uh, on his side of things to his advantage. Uh, he's a kid that can really, really put the ball up high, and you know I've seen him place the ball, you know, really in a decent manner. So, you know, this may help the Bears in terms of being able to get down there and pin them deep. Mason Rutherford is back and lane sort of the turn for the Delaware State Hornets. Rutherford signals for a fair catch and takes a bounce and takes a more than bounce. Going to be down at the 15-yard line. That's where the Dell State Hornets will go to work. First and 10, DSU. They're going to work 85 yards away from Pedro. I think a huge possession for Delaware State. They're two scores down, two possessions down. I don't know after this possession they're going to have two more possessions. They need to make something happen right here on this possession if they're going to get back in this ball game. They haven't really had a whole lot of success passing so the football, so it's going to be tough. Delaware State Daniel Epperson is the quarterback. Hornets go to work near side of hash mark. Trips to the far side. 
single wide to the near side. Epperson will await the snap from center. On first and 10. Epperson takes the handoff. He'll fire. Far sideline in the flats. Got a man across the 20 yard line. Fights his way forward. Close to first down yard. It's going to be spared at about the 24 yard line. Pick up of nine, maybe 10 for Fasulu Godet, the freshman from Honolulu, Hawaii. It'll be second and one for the Dell State Hornets. Trips to the far side. Single wide to the near. The give to the tailback, straight ahead, running room, first down yards across the 30, out to about the 33 yard line. That's gonna be an eight yard pickup. Bryson Lane has the Hornets on the move with the first and 10. Well, you know, they've had a lot of productivity when they go uh, uh, no huddle and pick up the pace a little bit more of a fast break. Um, they've, they've been productive. First and and they've they picked up the pace of Tess. First and 10 Hornets from the 33 yard line. This time I see three wides near side. Single wide is Aris Scott. He is flanked out to the far side. Lone back Bryson Elaine. Your quarterback is Daniel Epperson. They'll wait the snap from center. It's a snap. Epperson will give the Elaine. The bounce outside across the 35. Going to be driven down at about the 37. Two yard pickup for Bryson Elaine. Five four yard remains. Morgan State's defensive linebacker, Brandon Griffin, coming up to make the tackle. After the two-yard pickup, clock continues to wind with 546 remaining in the ball game. Hornets going to go on the side, has the Epperson, the quarterback, will wait the snap from center. They'll get the snap. Epperson will go to a lane. Breaks the tackle behind the line. Gets across the 40 to about the 41, maybe 42-yard line. A little shot of the first down, about two-yard shot. It'll be third. It's about third and three for the Hornets. The ball going to be spotted at the 41 again. Hornets will go without a huddle. Stop Again, they go trips near side. Again, the give to Bryson Elaine. Breaks a tackle across the 40. Elaine for about the 44 will be close. I think he'll have enough to move the sticks. Indeed, it will Run be a first and 10 for Delaware State. Elaine is so difficult to tackle this kid. He's built low to the ground and um, always keeps a forward lean. And even though the Bear defense, I think, is playing pretty solid up front. You know, it's just still tough Eight to bring four the yards on the Far side has for his to work. We are approaching Delaware five State. minutes remaining in the ball game. I think a pivotal drive for the Delaware State Hawks. After seeing the throw, Daniel in the pocket. He'll pump, quick flip in the flats to the lane. He's dropped in his tracks. He'll lose about three, maybe four yards. I think they're going to an incomplete pass. As uh, appeared to have it initially. But yeah, they're going to call it an incompletion. As in the ball defensively for Morgan State. The incompletion stops the clock at 450. Remaining in the ball. I'm going to give uh, the Morgan State defense a lot of credit how they have adjusted uh, to this Delaware second State offense here in the second half. Delaware State, State throws the mark. Near side hash mark. Quarterback. Epperson. They'll give it to Mike. Oh, my. Almost broke another one. Mike Waters across the 45 yard line of about. The 50 broke a big 44 yarder in the first half and was a step away from breaking that one. Did get five yards. It'll be second and five from midfield. Again, without a huddle, Waters is set to go on offense. Quarterback Everson gets a snap from center. McGill to Waters. Waters bumps off a defender, leans forward for about three, maybe four yards out to the 46 yard line. Maybe just a tad shy of the first down. It'll be fourth down and a foot for DSU. Fourth down, and they're going to go for it. A fourth down, less than a yard. Hornets are going to go. Trips to the near side. Single wide to the far. Need this conversion to keep the drive alive. The quarterback will give to Waters behind the line, but he draws a defender. I don't think he got there, fellas. I think Morgan may have stepped him. Let's see where they mark the rock as Waters has dropped at about the 44-yard line. And they are going to give him enough forward lean to move the sticks. So it'll be first and 10, Delaware State. With 350 remaining, I think they simply have to go for it. They have to score on this possession as they are down two scores. They need to get something done this trip down the field. Again, McGill to the tailback. Inside the 40, down to the 38-yard line as the Hornets starting to find some running lanes. Bryce in the lane that time. Find six, maybe seven yards. It'll be second down and three. We do have a marker down on the play. We'll check out the flag with 336 remaining in the ball game. I want to get back to this kid, Waters, a true freshman out of M. Hotep High School uh, over at Delaware State side of things. And, you know, the kid is, he's a good football player, just a great runner. And even when he got the first down, I thought that the Bear defense did a pretty solid job of getting to him early and wrapping him up with just the extra effort on his part. So 
I mean, they are putting together somewhat of a drive. I like it in terms of what the Bears are doing because they're eating up most of the clock in this quarter, which, you know, I, 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 right now the clock is the enemy for Delaware State. And that last play, uh, Delaware State caught the Bears running off the field. They weren't was not completely set on that play and able to get a good gain out of it. Illegal participation, penalty against Morgan. Did not get completely off the field, so Bell State has a first and five. They have it at the Morgan 40 with 3.36 and counting remaining in the ball game. What is going to work? Trips to the near side, single wide to the front. Quarterback is Daniel Epperson. Again, crucial for the Hornets to put something on the board. This trip down the field if they want to bounce back in this ball game. Epperson will await the snap and center. Hit snap, short chop, left hander to throw. Fires on the crossing pattern, making the catch, but upended by Delonte Hall. Delonte bringing the noise as Cannon Black made the reception, but he paid the price. Going to be shy of the first down, though, as he's tackled up to 39. Only a one yard pickup on the pass completion. Once again, the Hornets are going to go without a hunter. KB Epperson has that offense set. And it's going to work near side has three Three wides near side, State. single wide to the ball. Epperson to throw, short chop, throw fire, near sideline. Got a man open, making the catch at about the 35 yard line. I don't know, because he had the first down. Catch was made by Mason Rutherford. They are going to move the sticks. And the Bears are going to first and 10 for the Hornets. They have it at the Morgan 35 with two and a half remaining in the ball game. Again, the Hornets have to score twice. They've been coming down the field, but Taking some time off the clock and so doing, only two and a half remaining in the ball game. Epperson to throw, Daniel stands tall. Now he's flushed out of the pocket, he'll just throw it away. Won't be intentional grounding, he was outside of the tackle box. It will be, it will be a second down for the Hornets. Line of scrimmage remains at 35. You know, I'm, I'm really surprised. I, I thought we would see more of a challenge uh, at, uh, for the wide receiver position, Aris Scott, the 6'2", 220-pound senior wide receiver, you know, against uh, against Dietrich Jones, the 5'10", 170 DB for Morgan. He's a single side receiver and has not yet been able to be isolated. On the carry, Bryson Elaine able to pick up about four or five yards. Let's give him four. He's going to mark it at the 30-yard line. And again, clock a factor. We're inside of two minutes remaining in regulation. Quarterback is Daniel Epperson. Epperson gives it to tailback. Bryson Elaine breaks a tackle. Penalty flags fly. We'll check out the flags as Elaine is close to. May have a first down, but let's see what the flag is about, fellas. Stops the clock with a minute 51 remaining. It's going to be a hold against Delaware State. That's big, KB. They're going to have to back up 10. Uh, yeah, well, you know, as we said earlier, the, the, the clock is the enemy for Dell State. Um, just really have not been productive, cannot get the ball to their big play receiver. Um, you know, Eric Scott and I think the Bear defense in terms of uh, pass defense efficiency has done a tremendous job. He's been in a one-on-one -on -one situation. They put a number of guys on him, but you know, have not been able to get the ball to him effect. Third and 15 from the 30 yard line. Epperson is the quarterback for the Hornets. Bell State gonna go on their side half. Three wide receivers in the set. Epperson will await the snap from center. Gets snap, Epperson the throw, settles in the pocket. Fires underneath, has Mason Rutherford. Rutherford breaks one tackle, leaps the defender up the 30, looking for the sticks out of bounds at the 25 yard line. Mason Rutherford got the first down, and he also stops the clock by getting out of bounds. Crucial uh, catch by Rutherford. Stops the clock with a minute 18 remaining in the ball game. Morgan clings to the 20 to 10 lead. And Rutherford uh, doing a nice job of escaping the tackle and getting out of bounds. Far side has mark. That's where the Hornets go to work. Again, they have to score twice. With only a minute 18, they're going to score here. They're going to do an onside kick. They're going to come down the field again. Up the court, any of that looks like they're going to have a pause. In the cards. Timeout Morgan. The bear captain Damari Whitaker is going to get a timeout. And so Morgan's going to get that defense set as they're looking to turn away the Delaware State Hornets. Still a window of opportunity for Delaware State Bernard. Morgan up 20 to 10. A window of opportunity, but you have to like what you see on the defensive side of the football for Morgan in the second half, getting pounded in the first half in the, with the running game. Made some adjustments and uh, really did a good job of shutting this Delaware State. Yeah, you know, you know, at the end of the day, you, and I agree with you, 
at the end of the day, you know, Delaware State has not scored in the second half, which is the plus for the Bears. Another team's not scoring, and you are scoring. You're winning the football. Particularly when your score is, I'm sorry, uh, particularly when your score is more than that their score. That's what I mean. You know, you got a little football play before. We'll say we have a big state stop on a rainy Saturday in the city. The Bears, the Hornets. Melbourne has the 20 to 10 lead. Hornets have the football. We have a minute 18 remaining in the show. Hornets going to work with the first and 10. They have it at the Morgan 25. Daniel Epperson, the quarterback. Hold up the throw. Good pops. Settles in the pocket. Head fire. Down the But it falls incomplete. It'll be second and ten. Epperson had all day to throw the football that time. Morgan almost came up with the interception, but at the very last second, the Dell State tight end had a shot. So it's second down and ten for the Hornets. On the 24 yard line, again, Epperson the Epperson has time. He'll put Now he's under pressure. Has to roll on his left. Oh, foul. On the fly. Got around. And about the 10 yard line. Catch made by, uh, yeah, Dell sideline at the 10. Catch made by Fahatu. 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 And the Hornets have first down. First and 10, they have it at the Morgan 11 with a minute remaining in the ball game. Hornets have life. Hornets 11 yards away from Pedro. Looking for the end zone. Looking to bounce back and look at the quarterback of Daniel Epperson. Hey, look the throw. Epperson with time. Hook fire. In the flats. Almost in the second by Charlie Hill. Does he have the pick? Yeah. I'm going to say it was incomplete. Rebell says, I got that one. But the Hornets are going to say that he trapped it. And uh, I think you couldn't tell from my position Broken that Trey Rebell was able to make that pick, but they're going to call it an incompletion. They'll be second down and 10. Well, he's had a chance back to back for two of them. So, hey, you know, if he gets three and that's a charm, <laughs> <laughs> maybe the quarterback likes it. Second down and 10 from the 11. Hornets go to work with 37 seconds remaining in the ball game. And I see a penalty flag there. Don't know quite what that's all about. He's going to be against Morgan, apparently. As uh, this one will work against the Bears, as the Delaware State Hornets desperately gain the end zone, as the officials apparently are calling a penalty against Morgan. Still waiting for the nature of the penalty. It's a five yard step up against the Bears. So as a result, it'll be second down for the Hornets. They have it at the Morgan six yard line. They're going to go pistol. Go back to Daniel Epperson. Bears dig in on defense. They send Quinn Rides to the far side. Single wide is Mason Rutherford to the near side. Quarterback is Daniel Epperson. Low man in the backfield. Bryce in the lane. The lane does a little shifting in the backfield. He's now on the right hip of the quarterback Epperson. Pick it snap. Epperson to throw. Left hand to rest time. Fouls end zone. Down and open lips. Can't make the catch. Pass a little too tall back of the end zone. Incompletion brings about a third down. Line of scrimmage remains the six. 43 seconds remaining in the ball game. So it's third and down. You can see on that play that the quarterback did not the read Hornets. the defense. He had his eyes fixed on the out route, and the, uh, the, the the tight end turning on the inside was open, and he just missed him. There we go. Third down. Third and goal. Well, third and five for a first down. Third and six for a touchdown. Back to pass. Epperson fires end zone. Has it at the goal line. Is he in? Yes. Touchdown. Hornets. State back on the board. Harris Scott, the big 16, 20-pound senior, using his Harry physicality Scott. that time to make the catch, run off the defender, and get just enough to fall into the end zone. Hornets on the board. Score comes with 37 seconds remaining in the ball game. The Hornets have a shot. They need the point after right now. They're going to need an onside kick, but they have one. Wisdom and Zuni. Snap, spot, kick. And Zini's point after was good. And it's good. And everybody knows an onside kick is coming here. It's all about execution. Good news is if you're Delaware State anyway, uh, you, you at least have a dry ball to kick as the rain has seemed to abate it for a moment. The good news for Morgan, it's an anticipated onside kick. Onside kicks have a lot Morgan more State chances 20. of success 
Delaware we are not anticipated when they're a surprise. Drive so many goals and onsides is coming. Plays. My man, Colin Stewart, is getting the special teams ready for a game. Uh, you know, and this 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 group right here is not just the hands team. This is the this is the, the, the implement regular hands team. You know, you gotta get you know your receivers, your running backs, guys that are used to handling the football out there. You know, especially an ugly ball. You know, what the kicker wants to try to do is really get a big hop on that football. And, you know, give that uh, that uh, kick team a chance to get down there and try to take a shot at someone. Uh, knock that ball loose and get on top of that football. You know, and hopefully uh, they can get in a uh, position in the limited amount of time to get a field goal and score. But it's like the Bears have uh, prepared themselves for it. You see a bunch of uh, receivers and guys that can handle the ball. You see Martin and those guys you wouldn't normally see on that front line. You got a bunch of wide receivers. You see the Bears Spielman uh, out there as well. And, uh, you see Pro T, so the hands group is there. Here we go. Kick coming up. Winston and Zidi is the first kicker for the Hornets. He approaches the team. The arm size is on the way. It's tipped by Morgan and finally corralled by Willie Gillis. As it was tipped by an up back and finally corralled was uh, Willie Gillis got his hands on it. And Morgan tied in. He's tapping out of bounds. So the arm size unsuccessful by the Hornets. There's the penalty down. I think it's off size. Against Delaware State, if you're more than you're to fly, you don't want another onside kick. You're just going to take possession of the football. So I anticipate Morgan declining this penalty and Morgan taking possession of the football. If there were perfect weather conditions for an onside kick, this is it. That was a tough one there. What did Gillis say? You know, really, Gillis is also uh, one of the kids that's on the punt team as well. He has pretty good hands, you know. He's, for his size, he's really a soft-handed guy, two-foot athlete. Played a couple sports in high school. Played a decent basketball player. Morgan Stanton, 36 seconds away from putting his bad boy on ice. They just have to take a name, not me. And then they run the happy stuff. They got the two-day formation going on. As Morgan Stanton, looking to take a name, get out of this. You just have to count it down, and that'll be your ball game. Not easy, fellas. Once again, the Bears are tested at home in the Mayak. Got away with their win over Howard last week, 28-24. It looks like another slim win this afternoon, Kobe over Delaware State. As Northern State University is uh, looking at a 20-17 win over the Hornets of Delaware State. Well, you know, I thought that at halftime, the Bears went in and made some tremendous adjustments. And, uh, able to do some more things in terms of offense. And, you know, we saw more consistency you know, on the offensive side of things. Just consistently spreading the football via touchdown, via field goal. We saw uh, the young kicker, Rhea, you know, uh, make some big time field goals in the second half of the ball game. Special teams played a huge part in the second half. And, hey, Dr. David Wilson, president of Morgan State University, you're in first place and never fit in the NBA conference. This is the football team. Now, I don't think you're going to be able to describe the character of the team by what you think you see. But what we do see in this team is a football team that gets better and better each week. Even with some of the other things that we talk about, the penalties and help win the team, why does this team keep winning football games? They keep winning football teams because games because they're getting better in a lot of other facets of the, of the game. And as they continue to get better, we're going to see eventually the percentage of those penalties these little away and hopefully the product that you're looking for is to have a complete team and, 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 and again I gotta go back and give a lot of credit to Rhea. You know if this kid right here continues to get better and the special teams uh, begins to you know sort of be more productive as we, as we saw today I think the Morgan State Bears are gonna have a have a, have a great great upside as they get deeper and deeper into the season. Indeed the Morgan State team found a way to get the win today. Uh, Renard Stubbs and uh, uh, don't give some credit to the kicking down now. It's Rea. He's uh, all three guys from California are meeting at about the 35. Alex Rea from California and a couple of Californians from Delaware State. They all took pictures together to California call. But Alex Rea from California, he had a big day today kicking the football. We needed those four guys. We only won by three, 20 to 17. Yeah, we needed those. Uh, one kick was blocked 
but he also improved his punting. He had a 59-yarder in the second half. He improved his punting average. But one of the big things that stood out in my mind, DeMond, you know I love the running game. I was so excited about the Morgan State uh, running game coming into season with three or four, maybe five really good running backs. 169 yards rushing on the ground for MSU. That looms large as MIAC competitions get thicker and thicker as we go wasn't pretty, but they got it done. Morgan State winners over the Delaware State Hornets by the final count of 20 to 17. Morgan State able to get it done. And look at Renard, they'll try to get it done next week, try to make it three in a row against Savannah State. Well, they have a good uh, shot to take on, uh, when they take on Savannah State next week. Can't take Savannah State lightly anymore. They knocked off Dune Cookman, uh, one of the uh, powers over the last few years here in the uh, Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. I just think it's wide open in the MEAC uh, this year. And even though the Bears will not compete for a championship, I think that they could be a great spoiler in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. I think they can be a spoiler, but I think hands down that uh, that North Carolina a t team is a team that people have to actually beat. You know, they're the number one team in the Black College Sheridan football poll. But again, you know, I don't think Fred Ferrier gives a darn. You know, he's the type of coach that he feels as though that if he prepares his kids, you know, for the ball game, and uh, they have a great, solid game plan. But this team can compete with anybody in this conference. And, you know, what coach wouldn't think that? That's the mindset. I'm not going to say that Coach Ferry is arrogant, but he's definitely not a guy who has a football team to lay down. And we can see that game after game with this team. It, 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 even if it digs a hole for itself, it finds a way to dig itself out of that hole. And we've seen what we saw was a tr tremendous comeback on last week, I thought. And this week, just a dominating second half for this football team. And, uh, hey, Morgan State Bears, number one in the conference again, undefeated in the MIA. And I tell you, even against Holy Cross, even against Marshall, they never gave up. I mean, they had some execution problems, some penalty problems. But you could tell they never put their heads down. They played into the final whistle. And that's always a good thing when you're talking about a football team. And now you have a Morgan State football team with a 2-0 and record in the MIA. Turn on, man. Morgan State on top of the heat from the middle, and looking to see if they can free her against a surprising Savannah State squad. You're taking particularly in the middle, and you definitely get a hard save at home. When you're on the home front, you really do have to find a way to get those wins. Now, fellas, we're going to find out if you can do it in somebody else's house, in somebody else's bedroom, in somebody else's living room, as it were. And it's tough when you're up in somebody else's living room, sitting on their couch and trying to get away uh, with a win. That will be the challenge next week for the Bears as they take it on the road against Savannah State and then homecoming on Hampton campus two weeks since. There's only two tough ball games for the Lions in the blue. There's no doubt, man. I don't think you can just walk into Shannon Sharp's living room and just put your feet up on the, on the sofa or whatnot. Uh, of course, a graduate of Savannah State, but again, you know, one of the things about this Morgan State team is that you can't really, it's, it's difficult to, to really scout uh, this Morgan State team. And, and, you know, and one of the reasons is that, you know, you can have big-time receivers or big-time players. You know, this is the no-name wide receiver crew for Morgan State because I think the quarterback, Chris Andrews, just does a tremendous job in reading defenses. Some guys have favorite receivers that they feel like they got to get the football to. This kid, I think, does a great job of being able to read defenses and, and be able to get down to his second and third receivers and deliver the football. And with that being said, it's really difficult to home in on one guy. Hey, we're going to put a little bit more double team on this guy this week, that guy this uh, next week. And, you know, again, just a great recruit for, for Fred Furry and Chris Andrews. And, Again, great leadership. We saw him being sacked today, something that we rarely see from this team because of his poise and, you know, because of, he's just so heady and so cunning out on the football field. So, you know, as the Bear defense, I think, gets better, I think it's a pretty decent pass defense team that can compete effectively in this MEAC conference. Again, some woes against stopping the run, but I think it's getting better now. We saw more. Uh, I thought I saw more uh, eight in the box from the Bears. 
you know, zone blitzes and things of that nature. You saw a lot more aggressive one-on-one -on -one defense, a lot of cover one, a lot of cover zero. These kids can cover receivers from anywhere. And, hey, that when you can cover guys one-on-one, -on -one, you can do so many things with those other seven guys down in the box, and I think that's going to be to Morgan State's advantage. Okay, hey, Bob, let's go down to sideline level. Your boy, Miles, Tom Miles Thompson, standing by with our coach, Fred Frayer. Hey, Miles Thompson, take it away. Thank you, guys. Hey, Coach, great second half of the game, but uh, great win, too. But the first half, the first half of the game, a lot of turnovers and a lot of penalties. Would you, what, what kind of talk do you have with your team in the, in the locker room to fix that? You know, we the penalties have been a problem for us all season. This is our fourth game, and that's something that, you know, I've got to do a better job of figuring out what we're doing because, you know, we, we can – say whatever it is or whatever we think it is but at the end of the day we're committing way too many penalties uh, we got the turnover on the third down run by the quarterback when he's just got it we got a first down the drive is extended he's got to tuck the ball away we work ball security drill that's just a lack of focus at a, at a critical point in the game and we gotta we gotta get that cleaned up and uh, you know I got on him a little bit at halftime about penalties and, and not worrying about things outside of our control and just doing the things as best we could do them and uh, you know we were a little bit better we still had too many penalties down there critical at the end of the game we get 12 men on the field defensively which extends a drive and just puts them down inside the goal line where now your defensive calls change and, and we've got to be better I've got to I, first and foremost I've got to do a better job because you know whatever we're doing to fix fix and clean up these penalties it's not working and I've got to I've got to address that immediately we're going to be better at that and uh, we'll get that fixed. Thank you most of your time. Back to you guys. Thank you very much. Miles Thompson, sideline, along with Morgan State University's head coach, Fred Ferrier. The Bulls able to get it done. Morgan State with the victory. Uh, they beat back the Hornets of Delaware State by a final count of 20 to 17. And with the win, the orange and the blue moved 2 0 in the MIAC. Morgan 2 and 2 overall. Next up on the road against the Savannah State Tigers. We're going to see if this Morgan State football team can travel, KB, as they look to get it done against the SSU Tigers next weekend. I tell you what, you know, there's a bunch of things you got to fight down there in Savannah. Savannah's a beautiful place to play football, but I guarantee you they got some mosquitoes down there that wear <laughs> army boots. And uh, it really is. It has been distracting to teams that come in that's not used to uh, that particular area uh, which really used to be a swamp-type area uh, down there, and some teams have found it to be, you know, distracting. Uh, you know, but, it, but since the new turf, it had not been as much of a, a deal. That natural grass was difficult for a lot of people. But um, looking ahead, I think you got a football team here at Morgan State who uh, can show shown in the second half of this ball game that they can put together consistent drives and finish them with scoring, whether it be with uh, – special teams or whether it be with touchdowns i think that's very very important when you walk away from the second half of this ball game you got to feel confident about how the team was able to put it together particularly in the inclement weather i think you're beginning to see the leadership of chris andrews really come out in this football team and you know though he had a big turnover with some would say in the first half of this ball game you can see that you know just his poise in the second half and you know, just being steady and, and leading this football team is a was a great opportunity for them to demonstrate that level of consistency we've been looking for. On the other side of it, LG, you just look at a defense that didn't allow scoring in the second half, really, until the way minutes of the ball game when you're in sort of a, a prevent. Because remember, the Bears played aggressively all football game, cover one and cover two, and and so they gave up a little bit of room and a little bit of real estate. And they scored the ball uh, late in the second half, a little bit too late, you know, to win the ball game. But I was really pleased with the amount of tackles for loss that you saw in the second half. I thought Gibson had a tremendous second half, a uh, bunch of tackles for loss. They did not allow the uh, – uh, Delaware State really to run the football as well as they should have been running the football. And so I'm really pleased that I can see that the Morgan State football team week in and week out has gotten a bit better every 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 week. And I think they're going to have to get better, Renard, next week when they go on the road in hostile territory to try to tame the Tigers of Savannah State. And well, and that's where those uh, the tough road games at the beginning of the season, you know, go, go to a marshal, the big crowd, and uh, they played well in spots. So I expect this team to play better next week, cut down on the mistakes, cut down on the penalties, and who knows, man, we may be able to come out Savannah, Georgia with another win. Hey, fellas, it's a wrap. 
Bears get it done the right way. They get the W. Before we close, however, I want to thank back at the mothership at our flagship station, WEAA, the Lord of the Board. Miss Fortune on the ones and twos. We appreciate her assistance throughout the course of the afternoon. Also want to thank here in the booth, KB, Calvin Bridgers, and Renard Stubbs also in the booth. And sideline for us was Miles Thompson. We appreciate him riding sideline, making his debut, holding it down, too, on the sidelines as Morgan State able to get it done. Good news final from U Stadium, Earl C. Banks Field. We're on the Morgan State University campus. Your Bears get it done. Final count, Morgan State University Bears 20, Delaware State Hornets 17. You're listening to Morgan State University Football. <laughs> 